three, two, one. And hello, everybody. Welcome to SEN After Live. I am Jay Wade. And I'm Kaylin. And holy shit, fuck Batman, have we got one today. <laughs> That's right, guys. We are now on episode number seven of this SEN Live After Show. And uh, our guest this week, we are pleased to welcome. He's a movie trivia schmodown promo editor. He also edits for The Real Rejects as well as some others. And uh, he has a podcast, Nerd Chronic. Everybody, it is Nerd Chronic. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Hello. How, how, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't know. Uh, I just want to jump right into this, ma- mainly because the spectacular was last weekend, and that's I, I'm, I'm still not bored talking about it. And I've, uh, all weekend I talked my family's ear off uh, at Christmas dinner, a pre-Christmas dinner. None right. of them know what the hell I'm talking about, but I, <laughs> I talk to them as if they do anyway. Um, but uh, could you tell us how, uh, how you first heard about the Schmoes and, uh, and then how you got involved with the Schmodown itself? Uh, so it is a bit of a story, um, but uh... – it started with the fact that I did uh, a couple years ago, I wanted to do a podcast with some friends. And so that's what we did. We, you know, we started a podcast like people do. And uh, an idea that I had shortly into it was I wanted to, you know, reach out to other people who are in the same kind of space. And I was uh, interested in kind of networking with people and working with people, uh, people that I had followed and admired online. And uh, the first people who I reached out to and they responded back to me very kindly uh, was late to the party. Uh, Robert and Vanessa, uh, they were uh, kind enough to come on my podcast to do an interview just about like their channel and their work and stuff. And we kind of hit it off. We had a great, we had a great time. And it was on my research, learning about them is uh, how I found the Schmodown. Uh, coincidentally, it was, it was about the same time they had just done the first Star Wars match at uh, Star Wars Celebration. Um, and so that's why, so that it was kind of the perfect storm of like getting my interest uh, right away. You know, I was, I was really into the match that I saw from that episode and then, you know, learning about late to the party and their involvement. It was a, a kind of a big coincidence, uh, for me. Uh, so after that, I, I was just, I was a huge, huge fan. I was a huge fan immediately, uh, cause I loved movies growing up. And, uh, the idea of this was like such a cool, a cool concept for me. Uh, and then, uh, shortly after that, they had the first live event, which was in LA, which is where I live. I live uh, in Burbank, and that's very uh, nearby to the uh, El Portal Theater, which is where they had the first three live events uh, that year. And you were uh, at the that first, live, first event, live event. I was, yes. I was there too. <laughs> oh, really? It's so funny. A lot of people were at those events uh, that I now know very, very well, and it's, it's crazy to think that we were also close at one point. <laughs> Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, uh, I was in the first uh, two rows. I, mean, I was actually caught on camera a couple times. <laughs> yeah, we were in the first row. Oh, really? Okay, I was. Uh, do, you, do you know uh, my buddy, uh, Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Burke? Uh, he, I don't he, think I caught he, anyone's name. Yeah, he, uh, he, shoots, uh, he shoots for me now. He shoots, helps me shoot the B-roll for all the promos I use and everything. And he was in the front row, too. He was, that's how we met. We, he was in the front row in front of me, and we met there and headed off. And we kept in contact uh, since then. And now he's a, a very close friend of mine, and he helps me shoot all the B-roll for that we have for the live events. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. small world. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so the first live event I went to by myself, it was just on a whim. Uh, I was at a point where in my life where I really just needed – something to like kind of do to be productive. And I uh, jumped into the Schmodown, the live event, went there with the VIP pass and uh, did the whole experience. And uh, uh, what I did that first event was I, I was so into it. Uh, I shot stuff on my phone because Christian had said that was okay. He said, you know, if you want to record things, that's fine. Just don't post any spoilers, please, until the episode goes up. And so I recorded a bunch of moments on my phone, like, you know, like the, the winds, the entrances, and the, the big moments from the wild berries. Uh, and I, uh, when I got home, my mind was still buzzing about it. So I just quickly made a 30 second, uh, promo, uh, of my own footage from the stuff that I shot on my phone combined with some of the previous matches from like the wild berries and the real rejects. And, uh, I put it up online and, uh, Christian, uh, liked it a lot. He retweeted it and he said it was great. And so, uh, I did that for the next two events that that happened that year at the same venue. And he uh, retweeted all of them. He was he loved them a lot. And 
uh, coincidentally, so this is the part of the story that it gets kind of uh, it turns it into a long story, but it gets kind of twisty. But it's it's a it's it pays off. That's what it is. Uh, which is after that first live event, uh, that first event that we were both at, uh, the next day, the very next day, I got a r- really random invite um, through Stardust to a uh, Ready Player One's uh, pre-screening um, at the the uh, Real D 3D uh, theater, and I went there again by myself on a whim, and uh, coincidentally, I ran into Janine there, uh, Janine the Machine. Uh, <laughs> she was there after the, the same event the previous night, and uh, we started talking because we were the first first ones there to the event. Uh, with our buddy Raul, and uh, uh, I, we exchanged information, and then quickly I was like, "Oh, you're Janine the Machine. Like I know you from the Schmodown." She's like, "Oh yeah," and uh, she told me later I was the first one to ever call her by her Schmodown name, oh, and wow. uh, <laughs> in public, yeah. And uh, so we were kind of like we, we didn't become like you know like good friends right away. You know, we we had a great time there, uh, but we kind of parted ways after that. And then uh, we did see each other the next couple events. And so after the third event, uh, when we, we had kind of somewhat of a small rapport with each other, uh, I did realize that we were both from the same, uh, area up North in California. We were, uh, we were both from the central Valley. And so we kind of had that connection and, uh, she was having an art show, uh, in October of that year. And, uh, so I was going to be home at the same time. And so uh, I went to the, the art show that she had a piece in, um, that, uh, uh, and so I went there by myself again, and I uh, bought her piece that she was selling uh, through the show. And uh, she was really appreciative of that, and I loved it. And uh, she, I couldn't pick up the piece when I bought it. But I asked her, well, next time you come down to L.A., uh, can you bring it with you, and I'll pick it up from you? And she says, oh, I'm actually coming down this weekend for a Schmodown match. Would you like to come to the studio and join me, and you can get it there? And I was like, absolutely, I would love to come join you. And uh, so that's how I first got into the studio, the uh, the studio where they tape the matches. And uh, when I got there, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like everyone has this first experience when you get to the, to the studio for the first time. If you're invited, you kind of have like this uh, feeling that you're kind of stepping like into a, like you're a, a different space where you're like you're not totally invited. Everyone there is lovely and everyone there has been fantastic from my experience to everyone who has ever entered the studio. But it's just that, that first entrance where you kind of had to acclimate yourself. Um, yeah. but as I was, uh, greeting everyone, uh, Christian came up to me and he said, Oh, Hey, Hey, it's good to see you again, man. And I was like, Oh, he, he remembers me. He knows like who I am. I had never like met him more than like a couple of times just at the events and once at Comic-Con, but the, a little earlier, just uh, for a picture. Uh, but he did remember me and he said, uh, let me talk to you when you get a chance. And I was like, Oh, okay. Uh, so we went to his office shortly after that and I sat down with him and he asked me, I was like, I love, you know, the promos that you did for the, the previous events online and what you did for some of the matches, uh, would you like to do those for us uh, full time, like professionally next year when we start season six? And I said, absolutely. Like, <laughs> hell yeah, I would love to <laughs> do that for, uh, for you full time. And so uh, after that uh, was, that was near the end of the year. So I did a couple of promos for the matches that they had coming up, the big events like uh, Bibiana versus Roca for the belt. And then uh, the spectacular, the spectacular three last year was my big like test Uh, It was the big dance, as Christian called it. And so I did uh, the uh, five matches, the promos for the five matches that year. And that was like my first big test to prove that I was, I can handle the stories and handle, you know, the bulk of the work. And uh, I started shortly after that in January, January of this year was my first like official like start of like, you know, cutting for the promos uh, match by match and for each event. And so that's uh, how I started this, uh, this year, season six was my first entrance year to this whole thing. That's that awesome. Is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like for real, I was completely engaged. That's great, man. And, and I just, I, the, the, the uh, Janine machine bringing it all first uh, full circle rather. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Janine is fantastic. I mean, I think she has a lot of people in her corner just because she's been such a sweet uh, person and a very kind uh, person to everyone, the fans, the competitors and uh, anyone who kind of, you know, meets her, uh, uh, falls in love with her because she is just such, such a great person. Awesome. Uh, so you just talked about, uh, promos that you've cut mm-hmm. and, um, what has been your favorite one that you've done? Uh, man, that's a tough question. It's like, you know, asking me to choose between my children, uh, <laughs> just because it's <laughs> like, uh, I, I kind of gauge what the audience, uh, responds to. And that's how it kind of like developed like my approach to most of these uh, promos. It's because, uh, I, the first big one that I did this year that I think I was really proud of, uh, what I put a lot of effort into was, uh, the Bateman versus Guy match in Houston. 
uh, in the mm. uh, Bubble Tea Ring. Uh, that was because you know I I knew I knew Christian was building up to that you know most of the year, and he wanted to be big. He wanted to be WWE. Exactly, we're in a wrestling ring, and so I knew it had to be something kind of with the energy that matched Guy and Ben uh, that had the kind of the, kind of the gravitas that he wanted, and so uh, I was able to pull that off thankfully. And uh, I, that was the first one I think I was really proud of, and I, I kind of figured out the style that I, I could accomplish with these with these uh things because christian called me after i sent it to him to view and he uh said it was my mona lisa it was you know my the uh the best one that i had done like entirely that year because it was the one that i was able to pull off like the narrative and the style and the tone and uh the like the mood of it and uh so i was really proud of that but since then you know there's been a handful that he also really loved and that i i've loved doing too which was uh smets and kalinowski uh, Kalinowski and Cushing, uh, the Inner Geekdoms, uh, Smets and uh, Kalinowski too, for the spectacular that just happened. Um, you know, so many and like so many of the other like studio matches too that just had like a certain fun style or flair to it because it was uh, it was this meant the matches had like a fun matchup between the competitors. Um, but if I had to choose one, if I had to choose one, I think I am really uh, the most proud of uh, Smets and Kalinowski at the uh, collision uh, this year, um, just because uh, I knew Christian loved it. Smets loved it. Uh, Mike and uh, the others, everyone else loved it. It was, I think it was the, it brought that story even further, even though they had a great uh, competition between one another. Uh, I do feel pretty confident that the promo that I cut for that kind of amplified the perspective people had on like that, on that rivalry between the two. Awesome. I just wrote that down so I can go back and rewatch it. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've watched every match, so I'm sure I've watched it, but I've yeah. got to go back and watch it. Um, I have a random question. Do you have anything to do with all of the um, little uh, scenes, the, you know, the behind the scenes scenes, uh, the, uh, the, the, story scenes. the acting? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I'm there. I mean, I'm there okay. off camera when, you know, when they film those things, but usually no, uh, I, I don't have any, hand in the production of those in the way that uh, when they're shot or like the written um, that's usually handled by uh, Christian and our uh, usual, our usual guy who shoots it is a uh, Cameron Rice. He shoots a lot of the B-roll and photographs for the, for the show. And he okay. does a great job with that stuff too. And yeah, he usually puts together the uh, B-roll uh, behind the scenes stuff that you see on Patreon and uh, more things like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so Obviously, some different players have come and gone. Some different teams have come and gone. Mm-hmm. So, what would what's a promo that you did not get to do or have not gotten to do yet that you would love to do a promo for? I would do a promo for. I was really looking forward to. I mean, again, like I, I'm very happy for everyone's success. But uh, when uh, it was uh, coming to Mike versus uh, Smets at the collision. Uh, the winner when the winner would go play Rachel at uh, San Diego Comic Con. I was really looking forward to cutting a promo between uh, Smets and uh, Rachel because it was just the Crusher versus the, the Smasher. It was like it just it had such like weight to it, and I would have loved to have uh, seen what that would have looked like. Uh, but um, uh, luckily, I think the way it turned out uh, now, it gave us like a, a great a great story between Rachel and Mike for that event, and then. Like a great story between Smets and Kalinowski coming back together for the spectacular this past weekend. And, uh, um, but beyond that, uh, you know, there's, it, it's funny because a lot of the matches that I kind of did want to happen, like did happen. Uh, you know, who's the boss versus the family in the teens mm-hmm. finals. Like mm-hmm. that was, uh, you know, match made in heaven because everyone wanted that. Uh, that was the, the the third go between Guy and Ben this year, and, and that story, and that it didn't have to happen that way. Like it, one of them could have lost, or it, uh, the family almost lost to Paddington too. Like they were on the cusp of losing that match until Atchity, uh challenges on win, and then uh, he set that up, and he set it up for uh, family versus uh, who's the boss, and like it, it was a great promo that I was able to put together, and I was really happy to do for uh, the third time between them. Uh, Were you in the room during the Paddington 2 um, challenging their own win? I was. I was there. Oh, what was the yeah. what was the conversation and energy like going on in there? It was a lot of confusion. Um, the challenges that you see on in the matches, uh, you know, they last for like 
10 seconds like with the graphic that goes up but that challenge let's say they go on for as long as they need to go on for people to figure out what the right answer is and that challenge lasted like 10 minutes like everyone oh, wow. was bit, like back and forth like just like trying to figure out the right answer because you know every, the, I, there was a definitive answer i think everyone has kind of fallen on the side that now that the question was written properly and you know it was and but Adjudy's interpretation of it was the problem and people did kind of understand what, how he was interpreting that and so they were starting to fall in with this confusion with the question pro- possibly being worded incorrectly or or a bit vaguely and so once he challenged it like everyone uh what we do is when the, the match is over uh when there's a win and uh that we quickly set up to shoot the post interviews with jen and uh when they were uh moving things around uh, getting the set ready like mid move everyone kind of froze and, and just looked over to atchity as he was calling out the challenge and everyone just stood there for like a couple of seconds, just like really confused as to what we were doing because we didn't know if this was like one acceptable and two correct because we didn't know like exactly what he meant by this challenge. And so um, I think it was a uh, uh, Mark and um, was it Clark, I think on the desk uh, possibly. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. They had to confer or I think it was Emma. It was Emma actually. Yeah. She, Emma. They had to com- yeah. They had to confer. Uh first he had to get for exactly what he was trying to say and then we had a bunch of people come over trying to you know, put in their two cents so that we can figure out what, uh, exactly what the fair ruling would be and uh yeah it was a it was a lot of confusion like i think a lot of us were uh flabbergasted just the fact that he that anyone would do that that was definitely unprecedented and um and, and a, a, a question just popped into my head talking about challenges and um I don't want to get you in trouble here, but I would mm-hmm. like to, if, if you're willing to give your an opinion on a recent uh, decision of a challenge in the team matches, the team tournament, mm-hmm. um, were were you there for the uh, uh, the Looney Bins final match in the tournament? Yes, against okay. Shazam. Um, do you okay? Her uh, video Drew's challenge with the the question that was said to be in the court category of horror, but it wasn't. It was ruled mm-hmm. that it was not. And then right. they went ahead and gave the people who had gotten the question that was asked correct and then gave video, drew another question. Right. Uh, do you mind telling me your opinion on that? My, um, I'll just say my opinion is that the category was horror and it was ruled that the question was not a horror question. Therefore, no point should have been allowed for anything, and they should have asked another question from the category of horror. Yeah. Do, would you care to share an opinion on that? Uh, so, uh, your so your concern is that the uh, ruling, wa- the uh, decision to uh, resolve that ruling was a bit questionable, like. Uh, uh, like giving everyone kind of like a half a, a point, giving her a new thing and kind of overlapping yeah. the decisions like that. Um, yeah. So I think what the issue was with that was because uh, she challenged after uh, Brendan had gave, gave his answer. So, uh, she, so he said it was uh, American psycho. And um, she said after that answer was confirmed to be correct for the question that was being asked, uh, she uh, then challenged it. And so they had to make the ruling. And so, uh, Mark had decided uh, that, uh, to be fair, you know, Brendan did get it right. I mean, he, he got the, the question right. Uh, so they were going to just uh, say if anyone did get it right, just based on like what their assumption was, which was uh, American Psycho, then uh, we'll give them a chance to be right because like they understood the question. The thing with the, the horror challenge to begin with was that the uh, people usually question, what does it matter? If, what the genre is, like you should know what it is. But the fact that if you read it as a genre, if you read it as uh, this horror film uh, did this and that, uh, then you immediately, your mind as a showdown player has to uh, do a lot of deductive reasoning, which is that, okay, horror films, it's like these, like fair amount, they were in this year by this director, whatever, whatever, what the context clues are. Um, so Drew, once she heard that question, she immediately threw out American Psycho because she's just like, it's not a horror film. So her mind, you know, when you're on stage under the lights, your mind does a lot of deductive reasoning that's kind of like out of your control. Where you're like, you're just thinking like, that can't be it. Like that's impossible for that for that to be an answer. So I'm going to totally disregard that question from my mind or that answer from my mind. And so, what it was for her when they tried to give her the ruling was that you know we're just trying to be fair to her, which is that the other people understood it, and so they accepted what the context was to it being a horror because they assumed it to be a horror. But she, 
uh, had a different uh, state of mind at the, at the time, uh, which was that it couldn't be a horror. So they thought it would be fair to give her another chance in that aspect to uh, respond with a uh, more, uh, quote unquote, legitimate horror film in the genre uh, that she would be able to wrap her mind around. Um, it was it was a bit lopsided, a kind of bit messy, but it was just a, a way to kind of keep it even keeled for the competitors who uh, were having different thought processes at the time. And that was what they're trying to take into account. And for the record, Jay Wade has been, this has been irking him for <laughs> weeks now. He, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's bothering him. I think, uh, is it safe <laughs> to say this bothers you more than the Paddington two thing? <laughs> well, that doesn't really bother me at all. Uh, it just, I just don't, that one is just confusing to me more yeah. than anything. Uh, yeah. But this one just, you know, um, in in in, in uh, what you said is completely fair enough, and and you're the first person that I've been able to bring this up with who has any insight or was there, and you know has knowledge other than just we viewers at home. So uh, I just yeah. wanted to get your opinion on that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. That. Yeah, I I, th- I think if if Drew had challenged it before anyone had given an answer, they probably would have thrown the question out entirely. I think that's what it would have been. It was just the fact that Brendan had answered it uh, first and then they kind of gave a little bit of a a leeway to trying to do a different approach to it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, But uh, before, before I thought of that, uh, we were talking about some of the promo videos and stuff. And uh, I just got to bring up uh, the, the Shire Wolves tribute video that you helped work on that. I've watched that quite a few times it's moving it's well done from a technical as uh, aspect it's well done but i mean it's moving it's legitimately moving um <laughs> and, and i just wanted to to uh could you tell us how you got involved in that and any of your any of your thoughts and feelings on that specific video uh yeah i mean i i didn't mention that that, uh, that is definitely is one of my favorites well that in a different regard uh from like the other ones just because it was a special event and um, uh, so what had happened was I was, Christian had asked me, you know, we, we knew that they were going to retire like before that. And so uh, I knew that I was going to make a video for like their last match, uh, which was just like the general promo video, kind of like between the match, between corruption and them two. And then uh, shortly after that, Christian asked me, uh, can you make a video, like a tribute video to send them off at the end of the show? Because it's going to be like a whole event. And I was like, sure. Um and coincidentally, again, I uh, at the same same time, I, my roommate, uh, who's a close friend of mine, uh, I've known for years. Uh, he's a big WWE fan. He's kind of my uh, outlet to WWE and kind of like what's happening with it these days. And uh, he uh, showed me a um, uh, some of the recent, like the past, like Hall of Fame video that they did for some of the competitors who uh, you know have retired and such. And uh, one of the things that stood out to me was that they had talking heads, which was like interviews of people talking about the competitors and giving their two cents and their thoughts on them. And so immediately I was like, oh yeah, we should do that. We should, we, we should definitely have uh, people uh, give their thoughts on Clark and Rachel, because I think that's the most important thing is like their impact. And so they could see exactly what people, what they mean to everyone else. And uh, coincidentally, uh, again, at that time, I was shooting interviews for the Roka documentary, which I am uh, cutting right now. And uh, I uh, was I happened to have like the crew and the gear set up to record everyone for that for that specific documentary. And so at the same time, I was like, let's just kill two kill two birds with one stone. And I uh, shot everyone's uh, interviews as well uh, for Clark and Rachel uh, for the event that was coming up uh, the following week. So I shot those interviews on saturday which is the day we days we usually tape and i had to get the uh video done by tuesday of that uh, that that same week that following week and so i shot it ingested everything immediately got down to it uh just edited the entire thing in the the course of like a day and a half um just straight through and uh i was able to put something together i was really happy with because i thought it, it, it exemplified what they meant to you know, the league to the competitors to the fans um and their impact on it and uh i was really like proud and happy to do that for them because uh clark uh, and rachel the shy wolves were you know they were i think my favorite team you know since i got involved and like rachel's my favorite competitor just because of her uh knowledge and her uh inner geekdom prowess which is my favorite league and uh i uh, she's an editor as well. She's a video editor as well. So I respect her very much in that regard. So I connect with her a, a great deal in, in that aspect. And so it, it was a great honor for me to be able to do that video for them. It was like, it was, you know, as much as it was important to 
show them how much they meant to the league. It was in a small way uh, showing them how much they meant to me because I was I put a hundred percent hundred percent effort into making that as best as it could be. Yeah, well, it was great. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And thank I you. rewatched it for today, and I was just like, okay, you need tissues to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, it, w- it was a great thing to do, and uh, the, something I wish we had done. I wish I'm kick- I kicked myself because I didn't do it. Um, uh, watching Rachel and Clark's uh, reaction to that video uh, while we were filming it because they had a TV there with the screen so they can watch it uh, in real time when it was debuting for the episode. Um, that was something really special to me, and I I, I didn't record their reaction. I wish I did, just to have it, you know, archived for myself because it was such a special moment. Um, but I was, it was. I just want to say like, they uh, were, you know, also in tears during that that video, and I was. Uh, to me, that's you know, like the highest honor. Like I could think I could have done this year, which is like bringing them to tears and giving them a proper send off uh, so that they could be happy with. I was just getting a little emotional hearing you talk about it there. Uh, it, it just was really good, and they were uh, they were not I, – I mean, I enjoyed them as a team, obviously, and I've been a big fan of uh, Clark Wolf's for uh, years via Collider video. Um, mm-hmm. But they quickly, quickly became my favorite team, and I just loved everything they did. Um, so, yeah, again, thank you for that, for that video, that tribute video. Um, but – I also have to bring up, and well, actually, you just brought it up. I had it down too, but I'm glad you brought it up too. But you're working on the Roka documentary. Um, what what can you tell us about that? We, I'm uh, looking forward to that. So, yeah, uh, it, it is a documentary that's coming out. Uh, it will be coming out um, soon uh, in the start of uh, the next year uh, in 2020, uh, before the new season starts. Uh, so that's uh, very quickly approaching. Um, and uh, I've been working on it for a while. Uh, we initially intended to have it out uh, much earlier, uh, which is why you saw a teaser for it for uh, during the free for all. Um, however, uh, we had decided at the point of that Roka was kind of on us on an upswing, like in some way in, in, in that regard. So we, we just didn't know where he was going to land uh, in the remainder of the year. And so we wanted to uh, wait a bit until we say like now, because we didn't know if he was going to win the singles uh, you know, title or the teams or whether we we're going to go with that. And then uh, he, you know, he was getting pretty far in the singles tournament. And then uh, he and Dan, you know, challenged corruption for the team title. And we were just like, okay, this, there's a lot of, there's a lot of story going on, going on with him. Uh, we don't want to cut this documentary off before like we get to the good stuff of this year. And luckily we didn't. And like convinced Christian to uh, let me uh, postpone it until the end of the year when we know a kind of a more definitive conclusion to like where this is going. And uh, you know, luckily we we did because uh, this past weekend, I, I think the particular spoilers are, are now up because the video just went live uh, uh, for the public viewing. And uh, if you have seen that, then you know that Roka did uh, defend the team's title with Dan. And uh, it, that was a, a huge momentous uh, uh, achievement for him because that was kind of the last thing that he needed to do in his career was he wanted to defend a belt. He had never defended a belt before that. And uh, that was something that he was really set to do. And I'm glad that we waited because now we have that as a button to like, you know, where this story has, has gone for him. And uh, uh, it, it, so it will be a kind of small, uh, somewhat 30 for 30 type of thing, but like less so than that. It'll be very akin to what I did with the Shire Wolves documentary, which is a very introspective, retrospective uh, type of video about him and uh but it is a bit slower paced you know there's a bit a bit more levity to it because uh we shot uh, a few things most of it around the free for all like the free for all was such a huge event that frank janish who's help, help, helping me produce it um he uh had the idea of shooting the free for all as kind of like the workaround event of like what it means to have everyone there together as like a big thing all the competitors just doing something together like a fun event it doesn't really mean anything besides just like the, the big ultimate win and uh, so I have a lot of back, uh, backstage footage and B-roll from that of everyone coming together and like Roka kind of enjoying it and getting in the zone. And then I will, uh, that will yeah, be the driving force behind that story. Uh, but then we will uh, try to pull it forward to like what his achievements have been this year, which is, uh, I think, a much uh, bigger story to tell. Yeah, I, I can't wait for that. Um, I know, I know, we're all looking forward to that as Schmodown fans. Um, can you give us an estimated runtime on that? Uh, if I had to guess, if I had to guess, I'm still working on it. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say it might be roughly about an hour. Oh, oh man, wow. that's great! That's yeah, great. It, 
it, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of stuff to tell. It's a lot of uh, stuff to go through, and uh, everyone you know, everyone has their thoughts on Roka. You know, I think everyone has a big uh, amount of respect for him because they, he was uh, I think the originator of like what this show was meant to be, which was you know uh, a show uh, and a competition. And he kind of brought that to the forefront. I think everyone wanted to kind of get their uh, respects and uh, what they uh, wanted to say their piece about what that meant to them and now, but now being involved with the league. So you have mentioned Roca, and we know that, you know, at least this season ended with him on a very high note. Mm-hmm. Um, so overall, watching Spectacular and being there at Spectacular – um, what were your feelings about it? Like, you know, what matches were awesome or what moments were awesome or, you know, challenging or crazy or whatever you want the audience to know about Spectacular? Right. Uh, the Spectacular uh, for this one that just happened, a uh, like a really uh, surreal event because uh, I mentioned this before during the, the San Diego Comic-Con event, which was just that it was, it was kind of like an outer body experience being able to be there with Rachel uh, as the inner geekdom champion. And like, she's my favorite competitor and it was like such a great thing. And so this um, was like that times 10 because it was uh, one, the uh, a big event that I think everyone was looking forward to because they had the fan expo. So everyone was going in there with like high hopes of like just having a good time. Like everyone enjoys the matches and everyone loves the showdown that, you know, that goes to see it, but uh, everyone being able to step in first and like get to mingle with the competitors and Christian and everyone else and have a great time. Um, that I think brought like a new level of uh, like personality to it that uh, I was really excited to be a part of. And uh, so when I was there, I was running around a lot doing work. I was treating B-roll with Dwayne and I was running up and down stairs and trying to uh, go uh, get things ready for like the shots that we needed. And, uh, uh, I was hanging out in the back. Uh, you can probably catch me in the video a couple of times recording uh, with the camera, either on the stairs or on the back, uh, doorway. And, uh, it was great. It was great. Like being back there, kind of like, um, watching the fruits of my labor, uh, pay off for that night because, uh, I had been working very hard for the last month and a half, getting those promos ready on top of like, the three matches a week that we were doing. and. Uh, I, uh, was taking a moment to kind of like, yeah, let it waft over me because I was like really, uh, one exhausted, but two elated that I was happy that I was able to like watch this pay off. It was uh, something that I was, uh, not worried that I would get done. Cause I was confident I would get it done, but I was like, you know, it's always that big project that you have that you're happy to see, uh, see done and happy to have, uh, be, uh, some, not one that you you're proud of, but also something that people can enjoy you know, watching people enjoy it and hearing people enjoy it live is like something that I'm very like happy to uh, experience um, because you don't always get that in this field, you know, video editing and, and such. And, uh, you know, unless you make it big, you know, you're doing movies and TV, uh, you don't usually get like audience reception for, for your work. And so uh, being able to have that as a video editor and for something that I'm really happy to do, it was a, yeah, it's an amazing experience. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Um, (laughs) Well, uh, to wrap up, uh, Mm -hmm. is there anything that you want to tell everyone, like about your maybe your YouTube channel or your podcast or anything where they could find you? Uh, Yeah. Uh, So, like I said, the Spectacular was like such a huge event uh, for me. Um, uh, On top of the fact that I do, like you mentioned earlier at the the top of the interview, I uh, do cut uh, for the Real Rejects. I also cut for. for other uh, YouTube channels uh, that do reaction videos like that. Um, uh, I have like, made my bread and butter that way. And so that on top of the country for the Schmodown, on top of like doing my podcast and other things, uh, I uh, have been running myself like pretty ragged over the last, uh, this, this past year, because I also work a full-time job. I also worked a full-time night shift job, uh, 8 PM to 5 AM. Uh, so, so the hours, so pretty much, <laughs> Most of this year, like a majority of this year, the hours when I'm when I'm not sleeping, I'm working. I'm at home working, and then I go to work at night, and then I come home, go to sleep, work, so on, so on, like rinse and repeat. And so during this past month, I was sleeping about probably I think like two to three hours a day for like a month and a half straight. Mm. And uh, so I was uh, really uh, by the by the time this spectacular came around, I was definitely uh, at my wits end, like trying to do that. So. Uh, I, I think I'll mention this again when the season starts, just because uh, it, it benefits me. Um, at 
the start of the year in 2020, uh, I, I'm going to be working for the Smodown still and for like my other clients and the, that I do love working for. Uh, but I will be leaving my full time job um, so I can focus on video editing um, <gasps> for oh. great full, full time. Congratulations. Um, I, yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I am at the position where I can, like, I think comfortably support myself uh, doing that. And it's really what I care about. And so um, that's something like I can then have more free time to not, you know, run myself uh, haggard, like trying to balance everything uh, b- b- between the, the odd hours. And uh, so, I mean, I, I do the podcast. My podcast kind of took a dive uh, this past month because I was focusing solely on the Schmodown, trying to make sure that was the best it can be. I'm going to get back onto it um, this following week, uh, just before Christmas. Um, but so if for anyone, like a lot of, a lot of people subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Uh, and so they see like a bunch of podcast episodes that don't have any follow up over the last month. That's because that's why, and I'm going to be doing more, but, uh, something I will, you know, plug to everyone is that, you know, I love doing the Schmodown. They treat me very well. And so do the other clients that I, uh, work for, but, uh, something I'm going to be doing more to, uh, justify it is I do have a Patreon for Nerd Chronic, which goes to myself and also my uh, friend uh, who's an audio engineer who does a lot of the audio work for me. And uh, so if anyone listening or wants to like, support me on Patreon, please do, because that will uh, definitely help me out w- making this transition into the new year and uh, trying to do this full time. And uh, that's uh, the main thing I, w- I would ask of anyone. But uh, beyond that, you know, the money uh, is not the important thing. That's not why I do this. It's not why I started the podcast or started the Schmodown. Uh, everything that I do, I'm doing now um, I'm happy to say I'm doing it because I love doing it and I loved it doing it when I started it. I still love doing it now and the money is great to support me doing it more and more comfortably, but, uh, I am happy to do it solely for the fact that it's something that I really care about. That's great. That's great. Um, where, where, uh, where can they find you on the Twitter and what is the uh, name of your YouTube channel? Uh, the YouTube channel is just Nerdchronic. It's just youtube.com slash Nerdchronic. And uh, our uh, social media is also the same thing, just at Nerdchronic on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, Stardust. Uh, yeah, a lot of that stuff. And, and on uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify, um, Stitcher. And uh, yeah, you can. I think most uh, podcasting platforms uh, you can find us on. And uh, we're going to be yeah uh, ramping up a lot of uh yeah, the work that I'm doing, also a lot of original content that we've been planning for the last uh, few months that once I make that uh, leap uh, from my full-time job so that we can, uh, yeah, justify having people come listen to us and come enjoy us because we do have ideas. You know, we have ideas that we kind of explore for ourselves and uh, get, get going, get on the, the ground. That sounds great. Um, uh, real quick, before we let you go uh, sure. for good, um, you do watch SEN Live, correct? I do. Yes. Yes, because I've seen I've I'm, I've seen you comment on there before. I just wanted to be sure. But um, uh, what are what are some of the highlights for you uh, so far with in this new stage in Christian's career? And uh, uh, in, in 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 addition to that, um, who are a couple of the standout uh, host uh, co hosts guest hosts who who have been on so far? Uh, well, I mean, so Christian, the, the show in general, like I'm really happy. He's been wanting to do something that kind of expanded the channel in general. So, like, I'm I'm really happy that he's uh, that this has kind of been like a, a good uh, it's had good good reception so far, and I'm I'm really proud of him. Um, as far as the host goes, uh, I uh, one like uh, he's not again it's necessarily a host, but he's one of the, like the co-hosts and like uh, 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 hands on the show, which is Ben Godard. Uh, um, he uh, Goddard, sorry, and uh, Ben. He's a great guy, and I met him during the tapings this past season. And uh, he uh, will be in the draft next year, so I'm really happy for him. And uh, he's a uh, really funny guy. He's really a great guy, and uh, so I'm, I'm happy to see him involved more with that. Uh, as far as like the general host goes, um, you know, Winston is fantastic. Uh, in uh, uh, Sheridan and uh, Kate are also great. Um, uh, but you know, as I said earlier, Clark and Rachel are you know, it's my favorites. And so I was really happy to see Clark on there as well. And I always love getting her insight and her uh, wit involved in the show. And uh, I think that episode was like very special to me because they were dropping a lot of knowledge on like their opinions about things uh, in, in that episode. Um, but uh, as far as like show in general goes, I, I, I watch it when I can, because, you know, my, again, like I said, my schedule is kind of lopsided these days. So I watch it sometimes live, watch it sometimes later in the day. 
Um, but uh, I uh, am enjoying it a lot because it's it's exactly what Christian wanted it to be, I think. And they, they have a good platform and a good fan base now, which is you guys and uh, everyone else who follows them every day because they love who the, the people more than the content. Like the content is great. I think they give us great content, but the people who are involved, which is Christian and, and his friends, uh, the fact that we're all there for them specifically is, is I think, a great way to uh, keep that channel going and uh, grow with it. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Um, Caitlin, you got any final uh, thoughts or questions here for the gentleman before we let him go? No, just thank you so much for doing this. This was a great conversation. No problem. Yeah, thank you for having me so much. Yeah, I, you guys, uh, you guys beat out a uh, call to action because <laughs> uh, they were wanting to get me off. But like they have, you know, a crazy schedule as well, especially the holidays. So I'm, I'm really happy and appreciative you guys got me on here uh, for uh, before the holidays rolled around. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> yeah, we are too. And uh, thank you for your time. We know uh, we know how valuable time is. Uh, mm-hmm. And and again, congratulations on your on your move with your uh, with your work situation and be able being able to do the editing full time. Uh, right. That's really thank that's you. really awesome. Happy for you. Thank you so much. And congratulations on uh, being uh, at this point, at least in the conversation uh, for uh, after show of the year for the nom- for the awards. Oh right, right, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. The, yeah. I mean, you guys have you guys are recognized at least. Uh, I mean, that's uh, definitely a big thing. And Christian does keep tabs on everyone doing these things, like these shows, and supporting the, the the channel and the show in some way. So I know he does really appreciate you guys and what you do. Oh yeah. well, uh, it's that. yeah, it's exciting when they mention us because yep. we're yeah. like, yay, yeah. they're watching. <laughs> They paid yeah. attention. <laughs> yeah. He does. He, he definitely does. <laughs> we totally nerd out. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, we do it in real time, too, as he's doing it live. We're in our little chat like, did you hear that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, thank you again so very much for stopping by. And you have an open invitation. Anytime you'd like to come by, uh, hit us up if we don't ask you soon enough. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be great. I would do that. All right, and there you have it, everybody. Nerd Chronic uh, here to to, uh, tell us all about what he's got going on, what he has done as far as promos, what he's working on now as far as the Roka documentary, and uh, we're all looking forward to seeing what kind of stuff he's putting out next year. Uh, We will be right back after this short promo, promo pause for some other shows from Merc with a Movie Blog. Hey everybody, Sean and Wade here to tell you about our new review show following each episode of Disney Plus's The Mandalorian. Dude, yes, Boba Fett! Not exactly, Wade. Set in the Star Wars universe, The Mandalorian takes place five years after Return of the Jedi and follows a Mandalorian bounty hunter beyond the reaches of the New Republic. Yeah, Boba Fett. Did you even watch Return of the Jedi? Never mind. Join us here every week on the Merc with the Movie blog feed. (laughs) Thank God Galen will be here too. I don't think I can handle Wade on my own. Hi everyone, this is Sarah, host of Go Get That Rose podcast, a podcast that is dedicated to talking about all things Bachelor Nation. Join Jay Wade, a man in his 40s who is recently new to all things Bachelor Nation, and myself, someone who has been watching passionately for the past three years, as we review, share our thoughts on each episode of whatever show is currently on TV, whether that is Bachelor, Bachelorette, or Bachelor in Paradise. We might not even know everyone's name, but we have fun nonetheless. You can find us on Merkwood and Movie Blog Feed wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey there, Schmodown fans, this is Josh the Merc Rainer, and I am here to tell you about my show, Talking Schmodown. Whether it's Andrew Guy getting hit with a chair, John Roca screaming, Outlaw! Or the emotional retirement of the Shire Wolves, I talk about it all. So you can catch me right here on Anchor and all the other major podcasting platforms. So, as I ask every episode, are you ready to talk Schmodown? I am. Hey, it's Sarah, and I'd like to tell you about Afterlife. It's a weekly Collider Live after show podcast where Mike, Sean, and I give our takes on Roxy and Dorinda's annex, on Yodi's producing skills, and whatever Cody and Alex are up to in that booth. In addition to having guests, we expand on the crew's discussions and add our own craziness to the mix. You can find the show on Merkwin and Movie Blog Feed on all the podcasting platforms. See you soon!
Hey guys, we are now back from break. Uh, be sure to check out those other shows we got going on here at Merc with a Movie Blog, and uh, be sure to check out what Nerd Chronic has got going on. Uh, that was a really good interview, really good time with him. He's a uh, he comes he's a solid guy, solid guy. Uh, but now for the second half of the show, where we dive into some Schmodown stuff and SEN Live stuff. Uh, we got a special guest co-host with us tonight. He is a regular on SEN Live, and he's done a couple other shows here with us. Uh, Winston Marshall, welcome back, man. How you doing? I'm good. How are y'all doing tonight? Or doing today? Good. I, don't know, I don't know what we technically are supposed to say at this point. I mean, I guess people are listening to this whenever. <laughs> it doesn't really yeah, happen. we we normally just say night. It's it's much easier. <laughs> fair. fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Welcome, man. It's good to have you back. We, uh, your your first appearance on one of our shows was uh, on Go Get That Rose, which is a Bachelor podcast. Sarah and I do, and that was just a hell of a good time. Um, so and then twice, right? That was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. You were, yeah, you were, and and we got the new season coming up soon with Sweet Puppy Dog Pete. So we're gonna have to see how that goes. No, for sure. I'm a little upset because, uh, uh, like. What should we call it? I uh, Tasha was supposed to be on this week, and then the schedule just got shifted around. So I was very upset because I was excited to meet her. So hopefully it'll happen in the new year because I think that we're we're still going to be doing shows, but I know he's, uh, that we're shutting down Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, uh, and then I get back. Uh, I leave for Dallas Monday night, so I'll be on Monday. I'll be on the twenty third, but then I might not be on until. I don't know, like Friday or maybe even the week after that, something like that. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, it, gotcha. Yeah, we figured it would be a weird week this coming up week. Yeah, 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 yeah. For and sure. it would be an absolute travesty not to have you on on the day that she's on. Oh, my God, it would be the worst. Oh, absolutely, man. I can't even imagine it without you being there, so. <laughs> oh. That's going to be amazing. I can't wait for that to actually happen because then we get to talk about it. Right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's what and, I'm and, talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I love talking about it. So, yeah, for sure. Um, but something else I've been wanting to talk to you about for a while now. Uh, you bring it up on SEN Live, and you've brought it up on Collider Live before as well. Um Dude, please tell us everything about the dodgeball. Like, everything. I'm totally interested. I want to know how you got into it. I want to know how the leagues work, the teams. I want to know how your team is doing. I want to know about all – I want to know everything, man. Please tell us. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, So it was – you know, it was completely random. My, my roommate at the time, uh, one of my best friends, he was just – I came home and he was just like, hey – you wanna um, you wanna play dodgeball? And I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Yeah, there's apparently like an adult dodgeball league. You wanna do it?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" And honestly, it was through this uh, organization called Club Waka, and they're more known for kickball. Uh, they do like adult kickball, but then they branched out into a bunch of different other sports. Uh, and so we just happened to pick dodgeball, and it was just a lot of fun. Uh, so I was playing in the same league for a good few months, and it was the that was in September. So I want to say then the following January, I went to my first tournament, and then I my whole world was just opened wide open. Like it it is insane. Not only in like how deep the rabbit hole goes, but how good people are at the whole thing. Um, like we just had the. Um, uh, the World Dodgeball Championships, actually, uh, in Cancun. They just concluded about two weeks ago. And USA, both men's and women's, took gold uh, after, what? what, the year before the men lost uh, at, the la at the last second against Malaysia, and the women beat Malaysia uh, for the gold. So the women are back-to-back -back champs this year. The men have gotten gold again, I think. This is the first time in, like, two or three years, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, and it's just... It's absolutely insane. There is, like, so much strategy involved. There's so much skill involved. Like, people literally of all types of athleticisms can be, like, a huge threat on the court. Obviously, the more athletic you are, the more of a threat you are. But, like, I know big dudes that are out there, literally, they, they because their bodies are really good at, like, slowing the ball down, that are catching machines. 
that they may not they may not necessarily be dodging anything, but they will catch everything thrown at them just because they're using their body to their advantage. So it's it's it is so much fun, and I highly recommend anybody that's interested. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter uh, or on Instagram. I can tell you where to look out for for leagues because they're all over the country. There's a there is a USA Dodgeball does like a a regional tournament throughout the year uh, for the North, South, East, and West, and then eventually has like a national championship. So like that's on the more advanced side of things. But because of that, there are rec leagues everywhere in the U.S. if people are interested. Oh man, dude, yeah, it just sounds so fun. Um... I mean, the only time I ever played was in high school. And, of course, you know how that goes when you're in high school. You know, the overweight kid never gets picked, and no one ever really, you know, I don't know. But, you know, I don't know. Um, no, <laughs> trust me, I 100% understand. I, that was also my plight, so I get that. And that's yeah. that, to me, is what's so fun about it. Is this? I mean, like anything, you'll have some of the community that they're very much into themselves. But overall speaking, the dodgeball community is very open and inviting and I've made a lot of really solid friends. I've uh, been more in shape in my life playing dodgeball than I have really doing anything else just because not only am I playing a lot, but it's making me want to go out and work out more so I can get better on the court. Um, it's just really, really a lot of fun, man. That's well, awesome. uh, so speaking of the community, um, the movie Dodgeball obviously is a movie and it's a comedy <laughs> and it's over the top. But, yeah. I mean, are there – have you come across any people who are or who are comparable to some of the characters in that movie? Um, yes and no. So here's the here's the funny thing. So like for example, uh, I want to say it's been about a year now. Uh, I around the time when Black Panther came out, I put together an all black team uh, called the Sovereign Nation of Wakanda, and we you know we have like there's photos of me in uh, the we got jerseys and stuff. There's photos of me in the jerseys, but like we straight up like had the jerseys on has like the black Panther print on it. And like the same Wakanda writing on it. And like, we were chanting Wakanda forever and like, Bay, like all that shit. <laughs> like, nice. Throughout the things, whenever stuff would happen, like it would be, it was, it was crazy. And you have people like that. Like my favorite tournament by far is uh, the Sin City tournament, which is run by West Hollywood uh, dodgeball. Uh, and so for those that aren't familiar, WeHo is the, the neighborhood of Los Angeles. So this is a very LGBTQ friendly tournament. Um, and so the names, uh, on top of the fact that you have to have a certain number of, of uh, LGBTQ people on your team to register, um, the names get super creative and hella ridiculous. <laughs> like, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. Uh, I was on the Peter Pan sexuals last year. <laughs> uh, there, but there were you had everything from uh there's a team called all by myself by spelled bi you had <laughs> another team called dick fillet where they had the same oh like gosh. dick fillet but spelled out dick fillet um I'm trying to think what other really good names did i see oh, oh i wish sarah were here she works at Ch she worked at chick-fil-a <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that oh that's fun. great let me like uh, uh, let me see if I can actually find the because uh, the tournament is every January around um, around what you call it um, Martin Luther King Day. So I'm just trying to see if I can. Yeah, here we go. So here are a list of some of the teams. Let me see if I can read some of the uh, some of the best names that I see here. Uh, let's see. Body shots is a good one. Uh, my team is uh, Claw Breakers. So instead of Law Breakers, we 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 uh, our jerseys are like uh, we have the white claw symbol, and then on the back we have our different crimes of like what we did. So mine is a DWB dr uh, dodging while black. So that's <laughs> um, let's see, uh, you have uh, what Duck Buddies? Obviously, instead of Fuck Buddies. <laughs> You have the lumber sexual, so this whole team comes in dressed as lumberjacks with beards and everything like that. And they, oh they, wow! Uh, you have this one is great for anybody that's a Dragon Ball fan. Uh, Dragon Ball fan. There's a team called the Pride Troopers. So they wear they actually get jerseys that are the same uniforms as the Pride Troopers from the Dragon Ball Super arc. Uh, so it's kind of like got that weird double entendre going on there. Um, let's see. They have the Wee Hoes. 
uh, playing on we playing off a of WeHo. Uh, you just have a lot of really. It's just a very fun open tournament uh, where people just like come and play dodgeball to like the the best extent you've ever seen. But like they're just very very like um, open and honest and fun and just it's it's a really great time. As a matter of fact, I believe. There is a massive uh, that same weekend is the same weekend that all of the LGBTQ like uh, semi pro and pro sports do their tournaments. So there's like a volleyball tournament happening there, I believe. Uh, I believe there's a golf tournament happening too, uh, if I remember. That at least it was last year. I don't know if they're all on the same weekend this year, but I think it is. So, so yeah, that's it's really great. awesome. It's great. But if that is all happening at once, that feels like a lot of traffic in one well, area. You would think so. So the nice thing is, is that uh, WeHo Dodgeball is very good about they rent out an entire YMCA, and Ooh. so uh, we. So yes, the the <laughs> the main tournament is seventy five teams, and then oh. there's two smaller tournaments that have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like ten teams in those two smaller tournaments. So there's the the coed one. There's a different ball type. It's a bigger ball type, and that uh, that one is ten. And then the women's division also has ten. Um, so it's it's a lot going on. You essentially have people playing dodgeball from seven a.m. until about seven p.m. Uh, both Saturday and Sunday of that weekend, uh, with partying happening before and after. So oh, it's, <laughs> it's it's a shit show for sure, but it's it is some of the most fun ever. And the nice thing is, you know, again, like the golf is going to be over on whatever big golf course they get out. The volleyball will probably be at some hotel where they have like uh, one of the Vegas hotels that has like you know beach volleyball areas, or they might do an indoor. I'm not sure which one they do. So like Vegas always has just a lot of traffic in general. But the nice thing is each of the sports isn't really encroaching on anybody else. So like dodgeballers are all at this YMCA. They're not like caught up in anything else going on. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. gotcha. You gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 That's um, really awesome. Yeah. But I would, uh, the other thing I would highly recommend people definitely look up and look into club Waka. Um, it's again, it's adult rec sports. They have it all over the nation. They also have their own Vegas thing that happens in October called Waka Palooza. And that's where they bring in all of the sports they put on. So kickball, dodgeball, volleyball, uh, bowling, uh, all that stuff. It, they come together from like a Thursday until a Monday in October, and it is a massive party along with a few small tournaments for people to play for like the championships of just Waka itself. So that one's a lot of fun too. And if you're just interested in like coming out and like having a good time, look into the fun games for that. The fun games is literally just uh, it's kickball, but really all you're doing is drinking while playing kickball. It's mm. the- it's the absolute mess. That sounds like my kind of sport. Yes. <laughs> See, kickball is – if I had to choose between kickball or the dodgeball, I'd have to go more kickball. But uh, I would not complain at all. Dodgeball was always a sport that I really loved playing. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, people I, – like I tell you, uh, my girlfriend and I, it's become an annual trip because we um, – we started officially dating, I want to say, like, a month prior to Wakapalooza. And that's the thing. Wakapalooza is a massive party. So, like, we got there, and we were both like, oh, man, did we fuck up? Like, we didn't tell each other this, but we were like, damn, if we had just been single for, like, a month longer, we each could have gone and done our thing and then come back together after this giant party. <laughs> but so we ultimately admitted that to each other, like, after Wakapalooza was over, and we both laughed so hard, and I think it's when we realized that we actually really liked each other a lot is because we were like, oh, so we were thinking the exact same thing. Uh, but it's become our annual trip now that, like, we, we try and do other vacations, but we always guarantee that we go to that just because... You know, that was when we really got to, like, fully know each other as, like, a couple and stuff like that. And it's it's fun, man. I mean, like, uh, my team is the Mighty Drunks. Uh, and so we have jerseys that look just like the Anaheim Ducks, uh, the Mighty Ducks uh, jerseys. And, like, our, our each home field has their own rules of how to play. So our rules are if you get out, um, then you go to our tent – and you take a shot with whoever um, whoever got you out. So we like to our, – our whole thing is we like to get people fucked up, but we like to, like, make friends while we do it. Um, and then, like, we have, like, exclusive swag. So, like, if people want to get it, they can either do a drink off with us uh, or they can uh, volunteer to do a body shot 
uh, and then we'll give them some different swag and stuff like that. It's a, it's just a lot of fun, man. We're just out there acting like idiots for like a weekend. So that sounds awesome. Now remind me where the does that take place in Vegas also? Also in Vegas. So these are two. Okay. So the, the, this dodgeball tournament is strictly dodgeball. That's happening next month. So I'll be there. Uh, next month and then Wakapalooza, which is like just this massive party with some sports involved is in october so that just happened a couple months ago it'll happen again uh this coming october so this is how not prepared i am for 2020 you said that it's next month and i'm thinking we already had martin luther king day this year and i'm like <laughs> oh shit oh, that's funny. That's i'm funny. like oh god it's coming that fast no, seriously. And I, but to be honest with you, I'm so ready to be done with 2019. Good Lord. So many people um, have been saying that. I, it's, it's the main reason is I did have some good stuff happen to me this year for sure, but this has been a rough year for me. I mean, we, everything from like being up for some seriously major, major, major jobs, uh, on, uh like in T in like the TV and hosting sphere, like acting and hosting sphere that did not pan out, unfortunately. Um, so like, there's that, there's like, uh, the, the day jobs I've been holding down, they've all ended on me within the last like month. So like, I've also seen my money kind of crawl to a halt. So I'm on like a, a spending freeze for the time being, uh, until the new year. Cause I don't really want to try and find new day gigs like a week before Christmas. That's not, yeah. you know, that's not something I'm really about, especially cause I know I'm leaving town. Uh, and then I want to enjoy New Year's. So it's something I'll be on as soon as the New Year comes back. But, like, there's just been so much. I mean, again, love my girlfriend to death, and I know I'm going to marry her. But, like, we had our first major fight this year as well. Like, you know, I won't get into details. It's between me and her. But, like, you know what I'm saying? There was just a lot of personal stuff happening that I'm like, I just need a fresh start. Fuck this year. Let's be done with it. Like, let's just move on to the next one, you know? I feel you. Not about this year, but I definitely had that year in my life where I was just like, I I cannot wait for the new year to come. Yeah, 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 yeah. A hundred percent, man. I, I, and people always like, they love to be like, oh, well, what's the point? There's such an arbitrary day to just assume that everything starts itself over. But that's the thing is that I don't understand people that like to shit on people about stuff that they like. Uh, yeah. If you don't want to subscribe to it, that's fine. It's kind of what I've been saying with a lot of people about uh, the Rise of Skywalker. Even what I said about the Last Jedi. If you don't like it, you're a hundred percent allowed not to like it. But you don't need to shit on people that are enjoying it. You know what I mean? Like we sure. can we can like have a positive discussion one way or the other about why we liked it and why we didn't like it. But you don't need to come for somebody and be like, you don't know what film is. Like you know what I'm saying? That's that's stupid. So the same way that when people are like, how oh you. New Year's resolutions, well, you're a dummy. Like, you should just change life now. If that's what it takes for someone to, like, feel comfortable and to reset themselves, just let them have that. It's not your life. It's not affecting you, so who cares, you know? Yep. Yep, you couldn't be more right. Um. So you said you had some things fall through this year, but do you have anything uh, in the world of auditions and all that that's, uh, you know, in the works right now? Yeah, so uh, so this year, man, uh, I don't know how much people listening know the industry, but uh, when you audition for stuff, uh, depending on what it is, you can be pinned or put on a veil. And essentially what that means is that the, the production team is interested in you for the role and they need to make final decisions. So if it's like a commercial, that means that they need to talk to the actual company that is the 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 ad agency talks to the company and it's like these are the people we're thinking about and then they make a decision it's typically between one at maximum three people uh and then for a tv show it's the same thing instead of that you're talking to uh typically the showrunner of the show and uh the studio uh that could be a movie or tv um so the director i guess in the case of a movie uh and then as well as the studio that's putting it up so you are the executive producers um, so the shitty part was I was up for eight major things like national commercials, uh, TV shows, uh, like both hosting and acting. And I multiple times for all eight of those, I was like either pinned or on a veil. So it's literally between me and one other dude and all eight times they went a different direction. What I take that back. That's seven times. The eighth one was a pilot that I booked and we shot but the studio decided not to pick it up. So Aww. it was just, it was a rough year where like you, 
I find myself so grateful for SEN, for the Schmodown community, for Collider, all of that, because that was uh, for Jay, for like the stuff that we were doing, because that was the shit that was keeping my head on straight. Because I was like, do I suck? Am I fucking up? And like my agents and my manager have told me, which is the truth. If you got to the point where they're like, it's between you and one other dude, you did everything you could possibly do. So no, you don't suck. It's just, they may have gone, you know what? Instead of like, a black dude with long hair, we want a black dude with short hair. Instead of a straight guy, then we want to go with a gay guy. Instead of like, you know, uh, uh, an, uh, you know, a black man, we want to go with an Asian man. It literally could be any minor little thing that they just make a decision and then they'll go the different direction, you know? And that so, you couldn't even necessarily control. Nothing I can control. It's one thing if I go to a bunch of auditions and I never hear back from anybody, then that's a different conversation of, okay, where are we fucking up? Is this like a thing? This was just a scenario of just bad luck striking left and right where like skill wise, I was doing everything I needed to do, but it ultimately not being the big thing. And I think the thing that there were two that hurt me pretty bad. There was one most recently, which I'm not allowed to talk about because of NDAs that I signed, but it was, I was at the chemistry testing stage uh, and they went with the other guy, which was very disheartening because you're talking like life changing type of money where like I could, if like give it, two or three months of that show, I could have bought a house type of money. Oh, gosh. Uh, and then the other one was uh, uh, for a national commercial. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but that Aflac commercial with Nick Saban in it, where they're talking to a black couple about like, you should join Aflac because, you know, we think we're the team for you. There's There's been a series of three different commercials running uh, with this couple. And so I was supposed to be the husband in that commercial between me and the other guy. And they told me, they were like, hey, you would have to cut your hair. I was like, fuck yeah, take my hair. Because a national commercial running through college football in the NFL, I'm I'm doing rough estimates. If it's the deal that I think it is, this dude made at least of a quarter million off of that when, the, when they're done running all three of those commercials. Oh, wow. So like, so like it was one of those things where I, like every time it comes on, I'm like, change the fucking channel <laughs> like, get that shit off my tv right now <laughs> oh completely oh. understandable completely understandable but the yeah. fact that you got that close tells me um that you're doing a lot of good stuff that you're you, you know you're gonna find that perfect role for you that you obviously have the talent and i mean we all know you have the charisma and all that <laughs> so that's not a problem. So I, I, I have confidence that you will find the role that was right for you. And if you didn't get any of these roles, then they were not right for you. No, I, I appreciate that. And I agree with you. And that, again, what it takes and what's interesting is that when I got out to L.A. after co- – or I went to college out here. But when I decided to really start pursuing it, we got uh, – me and my buddies all got warned by people that came before us, hey, this is a war of attrition. It's a matter of how long are you willing to, to muscle this out because you're going to have to build up your experience and your network and your credits. But that's going to take a long time. And even then, it's then like how much are you willing to sacrifice to get there? And what's so funny is I probably graduated with like 15 friends that were about that life, and there's like three or four of us left that were like – they found the love of their life and they're like, I don't want to do this. Or they fell in love with another field and they like, maybe they started substitute teaching. Uh, One friend of mine, he was substitute teaching. And then, you know, he's always been a big athletic person. He switched over into like coaching. And now he's coaching at this high end private school with his, with his wife and as happy as can be. So like, it's very interesting to see how that's evolved. And I'm at that point now where, uh, Last year, I almost quit. I almost was out of it, but I booked a commercial and then went on a run. I did booked like three commercials and uh, a Nickelodeon movie and then that Disney Channel show. And so with all of that, I was like, all right, I guess I got my sign that I'm, you know, this, I am supposed to be doing this. Uh, but it's very interesting that I was one audition away from me, like I'm out, like I'm done. So, but but you you just have to know what's worth it. Like, how badly you want it. And it also like anything else in life, sometimes you start off really loving something and then you get to a point where that changes and you don't feel the way anymore. You know what I mean? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I, I mean, honestly, based off of what we did last year and what, what the opportunities were up this year. And there is why I did realize I've just, I've, cause I'm sitting at my desk. There is one more thing that I shot, I shot uh, another pilot with Jay 
uh, Jay Washington, and we're waiting to see what happens uh, if they decide to pick it up. So that's that's what we're waiting for in 2020 to see if the network decides to go along with it. Dude, I don't know what it is, but you and Jay together, it's got to be gold. Yeah, <laughs> it's a for fucking- sure. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you guys are great together, man. There's 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 something good. There's something really good there that you guys that you guys can can do. It's yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, y'all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you uh, obviously. Uh, you're on SEN Live. You are part of the Schmodown. You're going to be a manager next year. Mm-hmm. Um, all that good stuff. I think everyone who's watching this pro- or listening to this probably knows all that. Um, so you got to announce the name of your team, yep. or, which is Swag Squad. Yep. And you also got to introduce a little bit of a, um, a I guess, a, a – a tagline or something. Yeah, like a catchphrase, I guess you could. Yeah. Or a call out, yeah. Whatever, you know, any, anyone, any way you want to frame it. Yeah. Drip, drip, drip. drip. With, yeah. The drip. Uh, yeah, with something drip. sexual. I don't know, but if I had to guess, it'd have to be something sexual. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is not. And that was the funniest part was listening to you guys last week, which reminded me, Hey, I got to get back on the show. Was you be like, yeah, he, he announced drip, drip. I don't, like it sounds sexual. I don't know. Like I don't know what the fuck's going on with him. But like, well, nah. well to be honest, when I heard it, the only visual that I had was pre cum on a oh, on a God. penis tip. Oh, I mean, God. I'm not trying to be explicit, but that was no, the it's... only thing I could think hey, of. Wade. That was well, not I mean, think about it. Drip, drip. I what else could it possibly it. mean? It could, be, it could be tinkle. Well, see, this is when the dick bib would come in handy, though, right? Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, Well, okay. So, for, so for, and I, and based off of y'all's show, y'all got me thinking, and I'm genuinely like in the middle of writing these promos for next year of like essentially doing, um, essentially doing like uh, slang lessons. And I'm debating whether or not to just do it as like, a professor directly to the audience and then like, you know, talking shit on behalf of my players, or if I'm doing this for the players as part of the promo. And then we talk to you that I'm working all that out right now, but I was like, all right, we're going to need to, if I'm going to be a mouthpiece for the next year, I'm going to need to make sure people know what I'm talking about. So they're not just like coming up with ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, I, I don't know if you've noticed this, Jay Wade and I maybe are not the, uh, coolest kids on the block <laughs> well uh, for me it's just that i'm that. old so all my slang that i'm familiar with is from like uh the the 90s and shit you know which is way outdated so fair well have do, did you did you guys figure out what it was it sounded like you looked it up and you figured it out yeah yes. i googled it i didn't want to i i didn't want to look stupid so i so i just looked uh well, no, I still looked stupid. I mean, what was I thinking, dude? Something sexual. I, it, I can't. And then now that I think about it, there's no way Christian would have allowed that. You know, there's no way. Hell no, with the babies there, there's no way in hell he would have. But that was what was so funny is I was at the spectacular, and at that point, um, did did either of y'all go? I couldn't remember. No, but I, I watched it live. Okay, so I did too. when I was there. I showed up that day hung over shit because what was going on the night before? Um, my girlfriend's uh, a work holiday party was the night before, and it was open bar. So we were drinking a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I showed up to the Schmodown hung over as fuck to the spectacular. <laughs> And so I walk into the fan expo and it was amazing meeting the fans. Like, you know, I haven't really met that many prior. I had seen a couple at the free for all um, that I got a chance to meet, but I just meeting everybody at the fan expo, the fans are incredible and I love you guys to death, but it was a situation where I was so sensory overloaded because my brain was killing me. I kind of wanted to puke. And then people were like, Oh, Winston, what's up, man? How you doing? I was like, Hey, shit. <laughs> so as soon as I got done with uh, with 
the promo for Swag Squad, I immediately went to the bar and got some whiskey. And I was like, I have got to hair the dog this shit because the Advil's not working. Um, so now I'm like kind of walking around drunk in the balcony, talking. And like, I heard like someone see me like, oh yeah, that's Winston. You guys doing Swag Squad. What the fuck is Drip Drip? That sounds gross. And I was like, God damn it. None of y'all white people know what Drip is. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I, what, so what can I say, angry. man? It's all, it's all, it's all good. It's all, it's all good. But I, it, that was the beginning of me being like, I'm gonna have to explain this. And then I heard you guys' podcast, and I was like, I really have to explain this. But yes, all drip is is that's essentially talking. It when you say you've got drip, that means you've got style, you've got swag, you've got like you're 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 probably covered in like you know nice ass jewelry, or you've got on a fly suit. Or you're wearing like your your makeup's on fleek, like whatever it may be. When you come in dripping, the idea is that you're just so hot that like it's making people sweat. You're dripping. That you're dripping in swag. That's what it means. So All right. so when we say swag squad, you know we gonna be dripping. Hell, that's the reason why I got people to say drip drip. That's that's literally it. So like the people that I draft as a heads up, because I'm sure people are curious about that, either already have it. Or I've seen the charisma in them a lot. I mean, obviously we want we want the talent, but I see the charisma in them to come in with that kind of uh, that to have that je ne sais quoi of like swag and like being that badass. You know what I'm saying? So you're looking at the obviously not all these people are available, but you're looking at the uh, you know the the guys of the world. You're looking at the the Batemans of the world. You're looking at the the, the Smetzes of the world. The Kalinowskis. These are the people that can that they can run their mouth. They can put their money where their mouth is. They look good when they do it. So they're either wearing costumes or they got a theme that they're about. These are the people that I'm talking about. That they're not just talented at the game, but they have a little something extra. Because honestly, like most other things in life, if you come at that not only with the knowledge and the skill, but if you come at it with a style, people respect you more. People are afraid of you more. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, and so that's that's our mentality so the, the other part that if people i don't i, I haven't seen the cut promo because apparently we talked too long um <laughs> but but swag stands for schmodown uh schmodown winners and greatness so that's that's you know that's what i'm saying we're gonna bring a whole nother element a whole nother level to this to this season uh and the battle of the the battle of the teams the battle of the managers whatever we're calling this you know so and so yeah it, it's gonna be fun hell yeah uh, so Speaking of the draft, yes. um, <laughs> I, yeah. I was I had the pleasure of watching Schmodown backstage live yesterday. I happened to have it on when yeah. Christian left Roxy out of the hat yep. and therefore had to start all over. And you yeah. went from number one to number eight. Yeah. And Roxy went from no, not at all to number three. So, yeah. oh, so <laughs> man, that's that's crazy, man. How do you feel about that? I mean, obviously there was no ill intent there, but I, I mean, it did happen, and I mean, there has to be at least some level of fuck, man. Oh, I'm pissed for sure. Now, the funny thing is, is that Christian, like, I didn't even know because I don't know if you guys were watching SCN live uh, yesterday, but like, I joked about how, uh, which is. Not entirely a joke, but I do occasionally, if I'm stuck in traffic, we'll watch shit while I'm driving. <laughs> Don't tell the cops. So, uh, I do too. Don't do tell it, the cops. I do it every day. <laughs> See, we all out here. See, whoever was getting a little movie, thing, I had exactly. the little thing attached to my air vent. Exactly. That's the exact yeah. same thing. Yep. And that's the whole thing. I only do it if I'm in standstill traffic. I won't do it if I'm, I'm like legitimately driving. Uh, I've done it on road trips as well because it's open road and nobody's around you. But I don't, I don't do, if I have to start, stop, if I've got a lot of people in my way that I need to weave in and out, I won't do it then at all. I think that to me is too much. But it, the 405, I've literally sat on the 405 on average somewhere between two to four hours a day, depending on where I'm working. So, and so when I'm going five miles per hour on a freeway and not having to do anything like, okay, the fu- I'm going to fall asleep. I, I like, I don't, you know, so that's what that is. But it's beside the point. I was taking a nap when this all happened. I get a random call from Christian. I'm like, why is Christian calling me? I hope everything's okay. And he goes, you're going to be mad. I was like, what happened? 
and he told me, and I just, uh, God damn it, man. God damn it. And now, now, do you think, I mean, there's really, there's not really many options to, as to how to handle that when it happens, you know, you really, especially on the spot, you just got to put Roxy's name in there and kind of redo it. But I mean, it, how do you, are there any alternatives that you think can think of that it could have or should have been handled other than just a flat out redrawing of the names? Because the only thing I can think of would be just to be say, or would be to say, well, we messed up, but Roxy, I'm sorry, you're going to be last because, you know, that's just how it happened. I'm sorry. Um, I other but but that's really not fair to Roxy. It's not fair to anybody overall. But can you think of any other solutions other than how it was just flat out redone? I had one in mind. I have one, but I don't think anybody would ever go. What, what did you have in mind, Kayla? I'm curious. Mine was uh, you put numbers one through ten in a hat and yank it out, and that's where you put Roxy, and then you shift everyone else down. It's not a terrible plan. I don't. I actually don't hate that. That that would have worked way better than what I was suggesting. Just out of me being pissed off, I was going to say that I should at any point during the draft should be able to go, nope, steal, and then just take whatever that pick is, and then that's my restitution for not getting the number one overall pick. Anymore. You could you could say that I'm not allowed to do it for maybe the first or second round if you want to like really go at it that way. But that that would be mine. Is that like third round and below? If I just want to be like, nah, I should have got the over the first overall pick. I just get to take a pick, but no one would go for that. But it's right. fine. I like real talk. Like I've done fantasy football for so long that like I've seen shit like this happen before. So while I'm annoyed, it's not the end of the world. I'll, like we'll still kick ass one way or the other. Uh, it just means I'm gonna have to bend my plans because uh, you start to plan based off of your your spot. Uh, but I was genuinely hoping. Uh, for uh, like just a higher pick, honestly. So that yeah. just kind of- now when when Christian gave you that call, that phone call. Now, of course, you guys are friends, and you're on SCN live with him, and you're in the schmo down. You guys have a close relationship that has right. nothing to do with competition or business. But right. in that moment, in that phone call, like how. How I'm and I'm I'm trying I'm I'm not asking you to talk smack or get yourself in trouble. But I'm just curious how aggressive were you with letting him know that you weren't happy? What like did oh, he I, know that you weren't happy or I, did you I'm kind real, of tone it down? Real talk, because he knows me again. I'm really not mad. I'm genuinely not. Like I I okay. I I have enough faith in myself anyway that like no matter what position you put me in, I feel like I'll do well. But at the same time, it's way more fun, and it also helps with the game for me to be out here sending all of these tweets because I'm sending yeah. a lot. Like I, I, every time someone's like, "Man, you got fucked," I was like, "I did get fucked," and then it's like a picture of somebody sad as fuck, just like for no reason, or like Christmas is canceled, or all the other shit that I put. Someone's <laughs> Like, uh, what if I told her they said, like, 30 for 30 from first to eighth, the Winston A. Marshall story. And then I put, like, what if I told you that his journey ended before it began? Like, I'm just, I'm going along with it. <laughs> um, That's great. But, you know, it it sucks. I mean, at, just like anything else in life, it technically is null and void. It technically did not happen because it was, it was, it was invalid. So what are you yeah. going to do? I mean, I, if we're going to, if we're going to get technical with it, it was invalid, so I just have to deal with it. Is oh, there, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kaylin. Oh, I was just going to say, is there anyone you'd like to reveal to us that you're already kind of eyeing to draft? I mean, obviously, being in nope. it. No? Nope? Okay. <laughs> the, re- the reason why is because I don't want anybody else getting any of the other managers potentially hearing it and being like, oh, that's a good idea. But I do have I do have sleepers. Uh, I have been talking about players with other managers, both on SEN Live and otherwise, which is fine. But that's just talking about people. That's not that's not giving tipping my hat as to who I'm seriously looking at. You know what I mean? And vice versa, I wouldn't expect them to do that either, uh, unless I really felt like 
all the picks were even, which I don't think that they are. I think that as in life, some players are better than others. A lot of it has to do with time prep, all that kind of stuff. But like, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to just like hand your, uh, hand your opponent a victory. So. Yeah. Uh, I have a different type of question, but very similar. So now Sam Levine has the first pick. Do you have any idea of who <laughs> you think his first pick is going to be? Uh, I, say do, McWeenie. I think I have a feeling he's probably going to take McWeenie because you get McWeenie, you also get Guy. And right. that's huge. They did extremely well as the family. Uh, Guy Guy is ju- is up there with those top competitors just as much. He's just as hungry because he still wants to smash on Bateman, but he also wants to you know, get revenge uh, on his former manager. Um, like, I, 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 he's got that fire in him. Um, so I think that that's going to be a huge pickup for him. Uh, and that's my guess as to what he's going to do. But you never know. I mean, it is, we are talking about the Inglorious One. He may have some something in his back pocket that we're just not aware of, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now I, I, you brought, you know, we, we just talked about Sam there for a second. And, uh, he was announced as the surprise tenth manager. Um, now I got a question for you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be as vague as I can because, and I'm not gonna name drop because I don't want to get anyone in trouble, and I don't know exactly what I can say, but I I want to ask you about it, and maybe you can you can tell me a little bit. I don't know. Um, Christian had said that. Um, well, first of all, we we talked to someone on uh, for the show, and there was a spoiler accidentally dropped as to who the tenth manager would be. And this was about this was at least four weeks before the spectacular. So, okay. um, so I, you know, I'm sitting on this on this knowledge of this spoiler of who it would be, and it was not that person. Now, yeah. uh, before I had heard this spoiler. I was I was saying I thought it would be Sam. It just would be amazing to have him come back, and it is. But my question is, um, Christian, he said that there were two people who were in the running for that. Now, do you feel comfortable confirming that the person that was spoiled really was one of the people and maybe giving us some insight as to why they weren't that 10th manager? Um, or is that something you would just rather not touch? I don't think I'm at liberty to say, but you are right. correct and that was that that there was something else going on. Uh, stuff happened. Again, can't say anything because I'll be honest with you, at the spectacular when Sam came out, I was surprised. I oh, I wow. I, I um because I knew and I was told not to say anything. Uh, and for the, the sake of that person's privacy, I will not I will not repeat who that person was. But they made a decision uh, to to step back, and they asked Sam, and Sam is uh, took over. So he is he is uh, f- going to be f- absolutely phenomenal. But yeah, I was I was equally as surprised at the at the at the, uh, the the spectacular. I had no idea. So for a minute, I thought Christian pulled a fast one on me and just didn't tell me. <laughs> but but no, it just yeah. stuff, stuff happens. Like people people have scheduling conflicts, things like that. So uh, I don't know the full story as to why it didn't happen. So I'm just I won't even remotely bring up their name because I don't want to. All right. Well, yeah, I I wasn't sure if that was really if that ended if that really was a spoiler or if if maybe there was just someone misleading or something like that trying to like a sleight of hand kind of thing. So because like you said, I mean, it, it caught me off guard when I was watching the event. So I was I was just wondering if that really was or but yeah, that's cool, man. That's cool uh, that you could at least confirm that that it wasn't just uh, uh, someone uh maybe not misinformed but just uh it, yeah. it was true which was really like it wasn't like it was rumor weird. mill yeah right. that it wasn't rumor mill right no and and the whole i mean the same thing i mean eric and i almost had a, a multitude of other matches as world's finest but scheduling got in the way either he had to work or i had to work uh so we didn't do as many matches as we would have liked but you know, it's funny because I brought it up on SEN Live this week that I was like, man, this motherfucker flipped out for nothing. We literally played four matches and we're at 50%. Uh, 
And the two that we lost were to two people that ran, went on a run from that victory of us to become champions. So like, you know, there's not, that's nothing to be upset about. And, and especially the match against corruption barely lost that lost that because they hit their five pointer. There was no TKO involved. Um, we took James Bond and did pretty well. And I, if I remember correctly, I don't think Kalinowski was able to steal a single thing. We had the multiple choice a decent amount, but like, knew it that like he couldn't capitalize on us in the second round. You know what I'm saying? So whatever. He knew what he wants. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um something else that we that we've learned and I I know you you've given your thoughts on this before, but I just wanted uh I was wanting us three to have a little discussion about it. Um the Christian announcing that they're going to recycle questions starting next season, which uh, I'm fine with, and I, I'm pretty sure I, I believe Kalen is fine with. But uh, my concern, which I, I think at least initially you shared this concern, was recycling this past season's questions. I right. think there, you know, there needs to be a cutoff where there is such a thing as too fresh. Yes. I um, is is that God. something you think Christian would actually budge on, or is that like is he no. set in stone on that? Do you think? I, I I know him well enough that like unless there was like a hardy case made by a multitude of people, he'll leave it as is. And I understand why. I mean, like you said, part of it's for the writers, but the other part, honestly, and he has a point, is that the point of an athlete is not only to be in the best shape possible, but it's to it's to like watch tape and learn everything you can about about your opponent. So like this is another one of those scenarios where it's like if you are really serious about this, you can there's a multitude of ways to study. Um you can you can um uh whatchamacallit, you can study tape, you can watch old game film and learn questions that way. You can go and you know look up IMDBs and just try and memorize directors and actors and stuff like that. You can watch films. There's a multitude of ways to do this. And this is just going to add one more element to the game. And just like anything else, like, I mean, Caitlin, you're a teacher. Um, Mm -hmm. And I heard you say this before, and it's a a very solid point. How many times did you do a problem in class and the teacher is doing it partially to make sure you were paying attention or did your homework. But on the other end, they're also, they want you to succeed. So it's also kind of a layup to be like, but also as a teacher writing questions or having to pick them out, I'm sure also equally as hard. So, so is grading. So if you can make life a little bit easier for everybody, while also just reaffirming certain things about certain students or teachers, you're going to do it. I think this is another one of those scenarios where it's like, Hey, we're going to give you this opportunity to shine right now because this is, this is, this should make it a lot easier. So uh, in some cases, it may not, but but it makes sense because if you think about how ridiculous inner geekdom's gotten at this point, uh, how deep cutty they've had to go with stuff, um, and other categories that that has been a big deal. Like for example, Kalinowski loves Bond, so like Bond questions are getting to the point where only he will know the answer to them, unless somebody is becomes obsessed with Bond as well. Um, I think that this is. I think it's ultimately a good thing. So he, he, Christian convinced me otherwise, even against the last year questions. Um, that, you know, I, I think that that would have been nice. Just leave the previous season off, but whatever. Fuck it. Like, let's just, let's do it all. Let's start over. Yeah. And as Bateman said, it's not about completely recycling questions where every question is recycled. I think it's more about, You know, you throw some in, and he threw out a bullshit statistic, which he likes to do, which was like, only 3% of them will be recycled. And I'm like, you don't know that. Stop (laughs) using statistics. He also threw out a statistic the other day, which, you know, (laughs) numbers always, always stick with me. um, That he said something like, you know, if an inner geekdom question gets asked in like the, you know, the general singles or uh, teams matches, it's going to be 40% year i'm like no you don't know that like how did what is the metric on easy so um, (laughs) ben bateman is a bullshitter is what i'm trying i mean what it sounds like is he you're 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 right he has to stop bullshitting the teacher because the teacher's going to come at you with them numbers and be like first of all 
Let me check your ass real quick. <laughs> <laughs> That drives That's me great. insane when he d- throws out a statistic because it's never, ever based on any set of data. Uh-oh. We got to get Frankie numbers to, to give us the actual stats on that. Okay. I asked him. I uh, He was like, you can go look at the stats on the website. I'm like, I don't want to look at your, like, uh, summary of the statistics. I want to look at your raw data set and like analyze it and he did not respond so <laughs> uh, frankie did this or christian frankie uh, shit man spoken that was on by, twitter spoken by a true teacher like, <laughs> I- <laughs> show your work god damn it i didn't ask you for the answer i said show your work yes. no calculators <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's- sighs> so um yeah, also, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> so the other thing that came up uh, this week again, I think somebody asked a question. Now, I asked Christian this question back when he first announced there would be a rule book. But somebody else asked again, would it be released to the fans? And he's making it sound like, no, it's not. But you're you're a sports person. Uh-huh. Can you imagine following a sport where the rule book is hidden from you? It's a good question. I've never personally tried to look up, like, say, the NFL rules or the NBA rules. Um, I'm curious if they are available online. I would be surprised if they weren't. Um, but it, it, it depends. I think that there should be some sort of forward-facing, but I, I also respect the decision if there's, like, a, a grander reason why he doesn't want to. I mean, I get it, but I, you know, that it's a solid, like, as a matter of fact, I'm sitting on my computer. I might as well look and see if. Um, um, I just pulled up the PDF of the 2019 rule book of the National Football League. There you, go, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, I it's mean, 92 I, pages long. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, yeah, see, that's always been my thing is, you know, if I had Christian in front of me, my question for him would be. Uh, you know, name me one other sport who refuses to release the the rules to their fans. Um, that just, I, I I mean, I there's no scenario that I can wrap my head around where, as a fan, where that w- would be acceptable. Um, how would I be able to really know what's going on is legit if I don't know what the rules are? Is my no, is my perspective? That's, I mean, that's a very valid point in the sense that you look at, like, for example, the reason you put out those rules for the NBA or the NFL is so that obviously the players when they make the league they'll be issued a rule book, but you put it out there because if there are people that are aspiring to one day make it to that league, they want to know. Not only the fans, so they know, so they can follow what's going on, like you mentioned, but if you have people that are aspiring to make it to that point, you you know, you know that, like, I just pulled up the NBA one. You know that specifically, you know, uh, from the top of the key to, like, the baseline is, what, 28 feet? So, like, uh, is what it says here, it looks like. So, like, you would want to know that so you know, okay, if I'm going to go draw point arc out by my garage – I know that it's 28 feet away from that is where my three point shot is. That you know what I'm saying? Like you want right. to get that opportunity. So I, I I agree with you. I get it. Um, I would just say whether or not um, you know there's something deeper going on there or something like that. I don't know. Uh, it is. Uh, I I only was made aware of the fact that he wasn't releasing the rule book like this week, um, and I just didn't really think much about it. But you have a very valid point. Well, um, my, and, and my thing is, he may be thinking from the point of view of when we write this thing up, it's going to have a lot of issues at first. Anything that you start writing will, through the first season that you're using it, you may find that the official rule book has some inconsistencies or some gaping holes or whatever, and you need to fix it. So if he doesn't want to release it immediately, I totally get that because it's probably going to go through revision. No, and I... I, I- I get that too, and that that very clearly could be what's going on. Is like, a, yeah, not right now. Um, well, until they really iron it out, because you're also right. like, since the internet uh, wasn't a thing when these other leagues came into being, 
Uh, so fans probably could not just go and look up the rules as right. is. They waited until we got to the internet age. And they were the rules for those leagues when they finally, the internet allowed for that. Those leagues had been established for a very long time. Uh, whereas right. this is what, the sixth year, the seventh year of, of the Schmodown. So, you know, they're still ironing some stuff out. It's evolving as it goes. Uh, so, yeah, I would hope that at what I would hope at the very least at one point he does make the decision to release the rule book. But I can understand maybe not doing it right away. Absolutely. And I just or I just no. I just want it to not be a never. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I can that. yeah. That's all I ask for. Look, oh. I, I, I'm not I'm not gonna lie to y'all. At the same time right now, I I a uh uh what one of those essential oil air diffusers at a uh at a holiday um white elephant gift. And I'm yeah. setting this bug up. I am so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, um, I don't even know what to say now. Um, <laughs> you know um, what's funny though? A lot of so there's so many medicines and things that you shouldn't use on babies, or you know, you, or you don't even know if they're safe, even if they are made for babies. And so many people recommend like essential oils and stuff when like they're sick or something because it's just pure. Yeah. Um, so it's becoming like this thing where when I ask somebody like, oh, you know, she's got a stuffy nose, what should I do? People are recommending like oils and stuff. And I'm like, OK, so this is becoming a real thing. I mean, yeah, but I, I think you got to kind of just everybody's flying by the seat of their pants in that case, because like if you think about it. How does this one, two, three, four, five? There we go. Um, the. The other thing that you have to think, I mean, it used to be like commonplace that you would put like, uh, you know, like a little bit of whiskey on like a kid's gums when they're teething to like help with the pain. But if you remember, you're technically getting your kid drunk. Like it's not, it's not <laughs> necessarily a good plan. It made sense at the time, but we have since come up with other ways um, to help out in those cases. So I think it's kind of a, a similar thing. Are you? Ooh, it's muscle <laughs> here already. Um, but you, uh, you know what I mean? Like you, you, you learn. Like things change. Like you, you. So I, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it at this point because there's nothing that we've looked at and been like, hey, this is bad, quite yet. So until we get to that point where then all of a sudden we're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't do that. It, to me, I mean, knowing what essential oil you find to put on a baby, what what you're supposed to put on its forehead or something. Or even like um, certain things like, I don't know if it's eucalyptus or what, like if you put it in like a, a diffuser or a um, air humidifier. Yeah. And it sort of, they like, you know, you're not shoving it up their nose, but they're breathing it. Yeah. Um, I mean, my mom used to always, whenever I got sick, we she'd break out the humidifier and uh, she put what Vicks Vapor Rub under my nose and on my chest. And then she would mm-hmm. put, like, they had liquid Vicks. You'd, put a, you'd mix a little bit of that with the water in the humidifier. And then, like, it would always help. It would clear up my, my sinuses. As a matter of fact, that became a whole thing. Whenever my, I would get sick, I'd be like, Mommy, put a big vapor rub on my chest. And she'd be like, okay, you spoiled brat. Like, yes. Uh, it, it was like a cute little moment that always made me feel better. And I feel like that's got to be the most important part. You just want your kid to feel better. Uh, you know how uh, you obviously don't slather yourself in Vicks if you're going somewhere, right. um, because that just uh, you know, is not uh too appealing. But they now make this little stick that you just hold it up to your nose and you uh plug the other nostril and you just breathe in, and right. then you do it in both of them. And I keep one of those in my car. I'm like, this is the coolest invention ever. I feel like I'm doing cocaine, but it is the coolest invention ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's, what is this you said it's a vix what now it's like a little stick it looks like a chapstick honestly okay. but when you unroll it it's it's a little uh it's a little plastic tube that's got like a stick of vix up in it so basically you just hold it up to your nose and breathe it in every now and then instead of uh rubbing it on you and having it actually on your skin okay so, wow. Yeah, so when I'm going to go teach and I'm sick, which happened to me a few weeks ago, I use that instead because, you know, you look kind of funny with a Vicks mustache. 
Yeah, no, for walking sure. around. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, this just reminds me though. I haven't used Vix since high school, like when I was still living at home. I might need to start fucking with it again because, like, I, I, um, I'm in the middle. You're, of the- you're not home where your mama buys it for you. Exactly. So when yeah. I got to college, I just didn't do it. And but I might need to get back on that train because like I what I'm dealing with bronchitis right now. It's uh I I what mentioned I'll be on a collider mailbag on Sunday, so it hasn't come out yet. But um you know I mentioned that I got double pneumonia when I was a kid, and so Ooh. the doctor the doctor warned me. He was like, "Hey man, between the asthma you had the starting this summer and now this, from now on as you grow up, if you get a cold, you've got about a seventy to eighty percent chance you're going to get bronchitis." Um, so you just need to be very careful uh, and stay on top of it so it doesn't turn into pneumonia again, just because your lungs are just that compromised. And the thing is, every single time you get bronchitis, it's only going to get worse about how easy you can catch it. And so uh, it's funny. So when people are like, oh, I have a cold, I'm like, you get the fuck away from me because I'm like, I don't I don't need those problems. But I'm dealing with bronchitis right now. I might, it might not be a bad idea to get a Vic so I can clear my lungs up a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Uh. And um, I don't know how we got on the 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 uh, cold talk. Uh, you were just, just... <laughs> you were talking about people figuring stuff out. We were talking about the rule book and like you yeah. know you know we put stuff on babies and blah blah blah. Oh I, yeah, so much I, this lavender smell has really calmed me. <laughs> oh, I bet it has. Uh, so. Uh, this is an Essie and After Live show, and we are just now going to start talking about Essie and Live. But that's typically <laughs> how it goes these days, you honestly. Might wanna, you might want to hit him with the timestamps, or you know, call call Ben in and get the timestamps for you. <laughs> oh, oh, we should. We should get Bagel Boy to do the timestamps. Um, <laughs> so Ellis um, showed up to Monday's episode. <laughs> yeah. know, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was great uh, yeah it was just great christian had no fucking idea he was gonna be there <laughs> none of us did i was i was genuinely surprised because we get a we get a schedule uh every weekend so that's the whole thing it's obviously being run by christian and by mark so they must have had a talk as mark said you know they had a talk at some point um but I, I had no idea, so that was fun because I've never gotten a chance to really do anything with that. I did a, uh, a Collider Sports Time with him once, uh, but I haven't really got to just do that. And, like, that was why that whole segment when we were talking about the glove thing, he just he genuinely rebroke me because I was just like, that's <laughs> Jesus, dude, you're a comedic genius. How oh, awesome yeah. are Mark and Christian together? Like they're, they're a perfect duo. They really, they really are. They, they, and like I've Cello, it's 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 Key and Peel. Uh, trying to think of other big comedic greats like that, but they they play so perfectly off of each other. It's insane. Um, it was it was an absolute honor just to be in the same. You know, I, I've been in the same room as them before, and I've obviously seen them uh, commentate together on Schmodowns before. But this is different because that's even though that is not scripted, it is a different Christian and Mark essentially because they are they're putting on the personas of the announcers to just yeah. have <laughs> Mark the Schmoes just talking is hilarious. He yeah, is, th- those are my awesome. favorite days uh are when uh or when Ellis is on. Um just be- because it takes me back to those old to the Schmoes nose show and and right. when they were both on on a regular basis together. Um and I mean, it, you know, and, and Kate cracking up uh, as hard as she was at them too is it's great not only seeing how great they are together, but how amazed the other comedians in the room are. You know, yeah. you and Kate just like uh, just enjoying it and soaking it all in. That's that's the stuff that's really golden. Oh, no, for sure, man. And, and you know, it's funny because I feel the same way about Kate and Brett. I feel like the two of them are oh, yeah. you know, they, that, that they work so perfectly. And I got to give Christian a lot of credit. He's got an eye for talent, man. I mean, um, you know, not tooting my own horn or anything like that, but just look at the people. Like, pretty much everybody involved in all the shows that he's on, he's the one pulling for them to be there. Um, 
And so, you know, he, someone may have brought them to his attention, but he is quick to recognize game, like game recognized game. And so he's the one that's like, yeah, I'm going to Brett and Kate and Winston to be on here. Like Brett and Kate, like uh, what they're there typically, what Monday through Wednesday, like stuff shifts around. It depends. Um, so like to have them on, on the regular, to get RB3 to come in, engineer to, to, to get Cody to work at Collider, to get Roxy over there, to get Doreen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he has an eye for talent and he is, he is a hundred percent a performer and a comedian and a host through and through, but beyond anything else, that man is a goddamn EP. He is a producer, man. Like he knows how to make shit work. Um, and he, I give him a lot of credit for that. He put together the, uh, DC movie news crew. Apparently, years ago, Roxy and Mike Kalinowski and uh, Adam Gertler, and yeah. who used to be the fourth, and now he does wrestling commentation. Uh, I'm not sure. Sorry, my phone's ringing. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I know who you're talking. Uh, about. I yeah, remember. I can't remember the name. But anyway, he like put that together. Like you hear about all these little groups that he like put together, and now you have like Roxy and Darina running Collider Live. And he, I mean, I don't know that they knew each other before that. He put them together by putting right. them both on that show, and it's doing great as well. Exactly. So he's he's just amazing behind the scenes. Like, he doesn't even have to be there. He can just, like, put all the pieces together and walk away if he needs to. Yeah, like, not, he really, and really does. Everyone who's on SEN Live uh, has great chemistry, but I absolutely love it when it's you and Kate and Brett. It's fun. Yeah. Those those the, the first day we did that, I was like deterred. I was I was just severely deterred in the sense that like or pertur- perturbed, disturbed, b- both, whatever. The point is, <laughs> I wasn't ready for that much energy at the same time, and it was just fucking wild. And that's why I even said like I, I told Christian I was like this might have to be like a once a month thing, bro. Like, I don't know if we can have all four of us together every <laughs> single week or even every day. And he goes, you damn, he joke, he goes, you damn right. I can't afford it. <laughs> like, <laughs> which to make even that a joke is, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause that yeah. happened. No, I was like, fuck, like, no, and that's, that is, that is my favorite makeup by far is the, the four of us. I mean, really, I would say the six because it's what me, Christian, Kate, uh, RB3 Ben because yeah. because RB3 and Ben add their own level of shit on top of that too like it's uh, it's fun it's been one of the most fun projects I've done in a long time well speaking yeah. of Ben Goddard so did you I know you were not on today but did you watch today no what happened Um, he oh is, man it's getting real buddy he, it is, he is getting real in a I'm very, jealous. very nice, sweet way, basically asked Bonnie on a date. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. And, yeah. Oh, shit. Yep. Uh, yep. She, she said, yeah. Like, they, um, it's, it, it wasn't just, like, out of the blue. She was, uh, Christian uh, was talking to her, and, you know, she's talking about how she's ready for this year to be over, um, because, uh, a relationship ended, so she's single, and dating is hard, and dating apps and you know all that crap and yeah. um, and some work stuff you know didn't happen and you know just on and on and something got asked about he asked Ben if he was uh you know who he was dating or whatever and he said no I'm like absolutely single and so then I don't know what Bonnie said and uh, he was like, I would love to take you out on a date. Like, dead serious, very calm, very sweet. It was so sweet. And she's like, really? You don't think I'm too old? And he's like, no. And so they even talked about it a couple more times. Like, you know, they yeah. come pick her up and, yeah. and whatever. So I'm hoping it happens. Watch the was- show from today. My boy, man. I'm about to come in on Monday just wowing. <laughs> just like, yeah, hey, it was great, mom, dude. I see you, bruh. Wow. Wow. Like, if they don't go, I mean, if they do go on a date, which I hope they do, even, you know, even if it's just a fun whatever, even if it never goes anywhere, if we don't get to hear about it, I'm going to be so pissed because <laughs> I'm like, yeah. we're, we, we are watching this unfold. 
this is glorious. And he's okay. So first of all, she said, I hope you're, uh, you don't think I'm too old for you. And I was thinking she probably doesn't know how old he is because he looks like he's 12. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's, that's the whole thing. He's my age. He's 32. I didn't yes. know. That. I thought he was oh, like, no, but, old. but like, she agreed to the date before she asked. She might know how old he is. I'm not well, sure. Yeah, but I know, but it's just funny when you're like, she, she could be probably think he's 12. Well, then she agreed to go on a date with a 12 year old. Well, that's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> I mean, she knows, she knows that he's a real adult, but I yeah, get what she you're knows saying. I know, it's, I know, I, it's funny. <laughs> but I mean, hell, he has a chance to go on a date with Bunny, Bu- Bunny, Bonnie Somerville, I mean, and she's great. She's got yeah, she is. the best personality. And, like, what, I mean, I don't know. I'm one of those people that I don't see why age matters all that much. But it, it just depends. I mean, I think the only reason that it matters is from the standpoint of, like, I get a little weirded out by, like, uh, like hell older uh, men with like super younger women, like Hugh because, Hefner kind of stuff. Yeah, because the, realistically, it's like, what do you genuinely have in common? Is typically where my mind goes for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one th- like a little age difference. Like, I would say you if you want to cap it at around fifteen or twenty, I don't see an issue. But like, I'm also thinking like maybe a thirty year old and a fifty year old. That's you know what I'm saying. That's different because it's like we're both adults. Like, age at this point really doesn't really matter with the exception of if maybe somebody wants to have kids. But otherwise, we've pretty much matured on the same level. We understand how the world works. We should have been, we should have by now started to figure out what we're doing with our life, what we want to do with money. You know what I'm saying? But like, right. there's no reason like a 50 year old should be with like a 21 year old. That makes no fucking sense. All that yeah. is is fucking. And if that's the case, that's totally fine. But like dating, it, it, it that's weird to me because how intimate it now. There are exceptions to every rule. Don't get me wrong. But generally speaking, that kind of thing weirds me out a little bit. Um, right. Yeah, when just, you're in different life stages, I think yes. is what you're trying to say. Yes, like, that is exact. Yes. It's the like, same reason why I don't like seniors in college with, like, sophomores in high school. You're nowhere near the same fucking life experience, even though you're only, like, a couple years apart. You know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Dude, it, um, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead oh, I was just going to say, yeah, uh, that's that's where I think I'm on the same boat as you. Like a 40-year-old and a 60-year-old, yeah, fine. Like you're both in the workforce and, you know, you've gone through, you know, you're not in, you're probably past your kids, age, you know, like your kids are right. either teenagers or grown up or you didn't have them and right, whatever. Right. But yeah, when you're still in a uh, transitioning from childhood to adulthood – with a true adult right. or an adult with a very senior citizen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it gets a little weirder and there aren't a lot of them that really make it work. Right. And so, uh, t- talking only- about weird, uh, I, ju- I just, I had completely forgotten about this in 10 until now, but, uh, when I was 27, I was working at Walmart and, uh, there was an older woman there. She was 40 at the time, just about to turn 40. And wow. she was a good-looking broad, man. Total fucking cougar. Broad. Yeah, dude. She was good-looking broad, man. And she, I mean, she was rough around the edges and liked to party and shit, man. I, you know. But yeah. um, it was, she she dug me, and I and I asked her out on a date. And, and well, she basically... Like, she let me know she wanted me to ask her out on a date. I asked her out on a date. But I went to pick her up at her house, and I go into her house, and I met her son and her son's girlfriend, and her son was, like, 22. I'm 27 at the time. Oh, God. (laughs) Her son is 22, and his favorite band is Nine Inch Nails. My favorite band was Nine Inch Nails. So he's engaging me in talk about Nine Inch Nails, and I'm so into the discussion because I love I love the band too that right. I start to feel like I'm like hanging out with some dude at his house. You know what I mean? And right. then it hits me later like this. What? Okay, my mother's name is Carla Jane, and this woman's name was Carla Jean, 
and it just as the night progressed dude it just all these things started adding up and i'm like this is really weird and we did not go on any more dates but it was just it was really weird well and that's but i can see that being weird you know for sure but i i think the big difference there is even that she's like 40 and you're you were 27 I would say that would like because you could have just matured enough, and I it could have just been a hookup. Which to me, just a hookup that doesn't bother me. But if you had ultimately right. been like dating her, dating her, I would say that it would just depend on how mature you are at that age. And if you were like like you said, if you were in the workforce and she wasn't looking for kids right now, and you weren't looking for kids, it may have worked out in that particular regard. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it it just depends. It really depends. Um, and I tend to find that most women, if they date them, so if you get cougars, it's very strictly one of two things. Either A, they're just trying to get a young boy to like, you know, give it to him, or they have found that they have found a young dude that genuinely can keep up with them. Women are right. I found tend to be way more on top of I'm not gonna waste my time on some bullshit. <laughs> so if they're gonna date down, the dude must be something special. You know what I'm saying? Whereas a yeah. dude is just like, oh, she got a nice rack. I'm like, hey, you know, trying to talk to her. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're dumb. We're really fucking dumb. Women are way smarter than us when it comes to that. Agreed. Agreed. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Kayla, oh. do you disagree? Or you just... No, no, no. That's just, that's great. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. And that is where you get in that territory of, like, you're dating someone whose kids are your age and things like wow. that and it gets a little wiggy but i mean like you said the biggest obstacle it when, with an age difference is children especially yeah. if the woman is the one that's older and past that point right no um, i completely agree I, but, I i um i almost dated a coo- my next door neighbor who was a cougar she was uh 55 and her son was like three or four years younger than me and i was 25 at the time um and so it didn't it didn't end up happening um though all of my boys were like bro you just gotta do it though you gotta do it for the team ain't none of us have a right (laughs) but yeah um, but again it just it 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 depends because it wouldn't we wouldn't really if we would have gone on dates and it would have been whatever but like we you could i mean i wanted kids at some point i was not going to have kids with her so like it would have never gotten serious serious honestly yeah, uh, yeah. but i i had my own experience with it with my dad my dad did a woman who was 2 years younger than my oldest sibling oh. and or my no i'm sorry 2 years younger than my second oldest sibling so two of my siblings were older than her and oh. that creeped everybody out for a little bit uh, he eventually stopped, but at the time I was what like fifteen. This woman was twenty five, and I was like, "Yeah, this is dumb." So oh, that that oh, sounds man. more like midlife crisisy kind of. A, a little bit. I mean, my dad had at that point been divorced for the third time, and he was just doing whatever he wanted at that point. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, um that is funny. one other thing I thought of uh, a few minutes ago, um. Kaylin uh, made a wrote in a stream lab to the uh, backstage show that Christian would not read on air um, <laughs> because she is a dirty minded uh, gutter uh, wallowing person. Hey, no, let me tell the story. It's my story. Okay. It doesn't. Hey, no matter who tells it or how it's told, it doesn't change the statement I just made. Carry on. Okay. Um. I, so that weeks ago, I noted in this show that... No, hold on, 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 Kaylin, I'm sorry. No, we can't do this. We can't do this. I'm talking about what you said yesterday. I know. Or, I know, I but we're not talking about... No, you're trying to open the door into how, like, you made some innocent comment, and then here comes Wade taking it way over the line. That is what's happening here. No, okay. it's not what's okay. happening. Dude, you she's trying to fuck you with you, Winston. This story. Be- because you're trying to taint the whole thing. No, I'm you're not. Try- I'm trying yes, you- to tell the truth. No. The, the truth is that you made a comment, an inappropriate comment about Brianne Chandler's cleavage, and, and, and it made Chris should not be able to read it. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so 
a few weeks ago, I noted that Brian Chandler had awesome cleavage in the shirt she was wearing. <laughs> like, it okay. was spot on. Okay. I noted it. Wade agreed with me. David B. refused to make a comment. He was being kind of PC. So then Brianne Chandler was on the show yesterday. So I was like, Brianne, woman to woman, I just want you to know that you have the best cleavage in the Schmodown. <laughs> and then I added, boys, you need to step up your game. Uh, to show Which means was- what exactly? I mean, how are they? What are they supposed to like? Wear the most tight fitting jeans and pop a no, Viagra? No, 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 I don't no, understand no, what we're talking more about. Like a, a push up bra and a little. <laughs> joking that we got to step our titty game up. That's what she's saying. I yeah. get it. I understand. Oh, what uh, okay. Yes. So, okay. but Christian <laughs> actually like screened it before he read it aloud, and he handed the computer to Brienne and said. I'm not reading this out loud, but you can if you want to. She read it to herself and said, thank you, and gave the computer back to Christian. Was this, so, this happened this week? This happened yesterday. Yesterday. On backstage. Is, oh, on backstage. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I was just like, damn it, Christian. Because I, so most of the time what he does is he starts reading, and at some point he goes, okay, I can't finish reading this. <laughs> and he did not do that. He completely screened it, so he didn't even get to start it or anything. And I wrote him again and said, damn it, Harloff, I wanted your reaction as you read it. And then I told him his glasses are adorable because I'm obsessed with uh, Christian Harloff with glasses. Which further <laughs> enforces my point that Kaylin is the one who lives in the gutter. Thank I you very look. much, people. Look. Yeah. Let, we had let, this discussion. When a woman tells another woman, like, girl, your rack is on fire, it's like a compliment. When a dude does it, it's sort of creeping. If, so if, I a dude was, does it, if a dude does it, that better be, like, uh, you know, someone you're seeing romantically or a gay bestie or something like that. You can't, a dude can't just be talking to some random girl and be like, damn, them titties, though. Like, that's not going to go yeah. over well. <laughs> Hey, hey Winston, I did notice something on this week's uh one of this on this week's uh episode. Um at one point you stood up and you turned around, man. You got a swell fucking ass. Rock that shit. Now Kaylin can't say anything or else she's a perv. <laughs> um I'm often the first one to tell someone if they've got a good ass. Um, I mean, look, look, all I can say is, as a black man, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I've maybe or may have not have told a number of people, no matter their gender or whatever, that they have nice asses. I just find a very polite right. way to say it if it's not somebody I'm close to. Like, I'll just find them. Like, because I'm sure you all remember, people were confused what, what, what I meant by black gold Texas tea talking about Kate. Oh, uh, I got it right off the bat, man. I'm, I'm glad. I see, and I think it's because you always joke about for the for the references. But I'm glad somebody understood my my Beverly Hillbillies like reference. Yeah. Hell yeah! Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> so Wade thinks that Wade and I've had an ongoing fight about who causes us to go down the gutter on this show, and I still think it's him. Because I often make a single comment that wasn't that dirty, and he just spirals. I think what it is is that y'all both are just perverts, which is fine. That's okay. <laughs> 2019. Who cares? We're adults. Like, oh, I'm good with it. I'll own it, dude. I'll own that shit. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'll, man. I'll, I'll be real. Like, uh, here's the thing. I am a huge pervert. I'm just not a pervert that would ever get in trouble, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, I'm right. Not nobody's ass. I'm not gonna be like, let me see them titties, girl. Like, I'm not gonna do anything like that, but I will be like, I yo, she got a little ass on her. Like, you know, like it's whatever. And if it's my home girl, I'll be like, girl, you know you got them girls out tonight. You looking good. Go ahead and do your thing. And she'll be like, oh shut up. But I'd say that to a friend. I'm not gonna say that to a stranger. That's weird. You can't oh, say man. that to a stranger. That's how you end up in jail. Those are the perverts that get in trouble. So, so you're saying I should have waited and told Brian in person? I mean, I would have been fine. Hmm. But, also, <laughs> but also, but also, we we also live in a society where men genuinely we still haven't gotten comfortable enough with men telling other men they look good, and it's, it's totally fine for women to do so. So I think it's also okay 
for a, a woman who's a stranger to say that to another woman. Uh, it just, but it also depends. You know what I'm saying? It is about how you say it. If you still were like, if you were like, damn, Brian, them titties look mad. Like if you said that, that still might come off as kind of weird, but you said, hey, your cleavage is, you got it going on. This That's, to me, another woman saying that to another woman, I would assume would be fine. It just, but it depends on the person. You know what I'm saying? Let me walk that back. Maybe Brianne doesn't like that. Who knows? But I feel like if anybody had a shot of saying that, you would probably have the best one out of the three. If, is it well, right. And, and I don't bring it up. Okay, like, I'm not the one who brings it up. I am, I am not that guy who would just sit here and just perv on someone out of nowhere, especially on someone in the space that we love and enjoy and talk about. But my thing is, like, when the female opens the door, then – I then I have no problem at least agreeing, if not totally jumping through that door. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to start perving out on anyone specifically, but in general, yeah, man, I'll take us, I'll take us to a dirty place and wallow in the mud for a little bit. Oh, yeah. oh Jay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah. I, you know, you know, Jay, Jay, I, I don't know. Jay. Jay. <laughs> Oh, well, oh. that was a fun place to go on this episode. Overall, <laughs> it was a fun week on SEN. I know next week will be kind of sparse because of Christmas, but that's okay. I'm sure we all have plenty of chaotic things to do during right. our time well, next we'll week. We'll for sure have a show on Monday. Um, if that changes, uh, you know, by the time this comes out, I'll tweet about it or something. But, uh, but yeah, I'll be there on Monday, uh, and then we'll see what happens with the rest of the week. Oh yeah. Um other other than uh than being on SEN live, uh what else do you got going on that you'd like to tell everybody about and uh where can we find you on the social media? Uh sure. So uh what I've been doing uh reviews with Jay for a while now. Um we've been focusing on the DC Universe shows together. And uh hold on, let me see where we're at right now. We actually did a review of uh the Rise of Skywalker. We're at eleven thousand views at this point, uh, and we did a we did a spoiler we did a spoiler review of it as soon as the embargo went up, uh, and we are we got it's a, literally a fifty fifty split of people that love what we had to say and people that hate it, um, but I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that uh, you know we we're in a society right now where people really want to make you draw a line about stuff and specifically with with um, Star Wars. This started last. This started really with the Force Awakens. So, like, I'm not surprised by it at all. But definitely check that out. Check out our reviews for. Uh, we're doing um, uh, Harley Quinn right now. Which, if you're not watching Harley Quinn, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Absolutely amazing. But you can find me on the socials at the Swaggy Blurred T H E S W A G G Y B L E R D. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube. Uh, and Letterbox, I, I finally have started really kind of pushing that out. So, uh, you know, I will put the stuff that I have on my watch list. I have stuff that I'm watching. I'll write little mini reviews on that. Um, so please friend me on there, you know, to tell me what movies you think I should watch and stuff like that. And I would love to connect with you over there. Ooh, I'm going to follow you right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, w- when you're done following him right now, uh, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you at, Kalen? You can find me on Twitter and on Letterboxd, since you mentioned it, at Kalen Rose 715 That's K-A-L-Y-N-R-O-S-E-715. And uh, you can find me on the Twitter at jwade1134. That is the letter J-W-A-D-E-1134. You can also find this show, eh, excuse me, you can also find this show as well as others on the uh, Merc with a Movie blog feed on Anchor as well as your other podcasting platforms. We're also putting all these shows on YouTube now as well. Uh, follow Merc with a Movie blog on Twitter at Movie blog Merc and check out the Merc with a Movie blog dot com site. Um, uh, one other quick plug that is not in our promos, we got a new show that, that uh, we're going to be starting here pretty soon called Convince Me, uh, a movie debate podcast. So we've got part one of a two-parter debut that is out right now, and part two will be out soon, where Sean, a co-host on the Collider Live after show, tries to convince me that The Last Jedi is good. 
so you could go check out part one of that. Part two will be out soon. And uh, Winston, I know you're going to be doing the uh, promos, but right before we get out of here, is there is there just maybe one slang term that you can throw us? Let us guess what it means, and then uh, and then let us know how close we are if we're close at all. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know, not off the top of my head. I apologize. <laughs> I told you I would think about it, and I just got so busy Christmas shopping that. Uh, uh, I just didn't even think about it. I'll let you guess what I got Jay Washington for Christmas, though, if you want to do that. Ooh. <laughs> mm. Ooh. And you can take a wild guess. A um, wild guess. Um, a thong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, leopard print right. thong. A wild <laughs> guess would be a leopard print thong. <laughs> and you two are Christian and Ellis in your own right, because Exactly right. Kalen does start it and you finish it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, man. Do you, uh, do you want to tell us what you got him? No, because he might listen and I don't want to ruin it for him. But, all right. Uh, all right. I, I will is it say not it is not a leopard print thong. No, it is not. I will tell you that it is not a leopard print thong. I will, I will ruin that. Spo- I will spoil that for you. That is definitely not what I got. <laughs> Oh, but okay. but at least the, the main point that we'll bring out of that whole little bit there is, is that we've got confirmation from someone who was actually on the show in the moment that yes, Kaylin opens the door and I walk through it. Um, so oh, no, here's the thing: she opens the door and you drop kick that bitch and rip it off the frames, and then all of a sudden. It- Bugs Bunny imprint through the wall. <laughs> Dude, I know no other way. <laughs> but uh, you guys, this has been a great episode. Thank you for joining us. And come back next week uh, where we have an interview that Kaylin and Sean did. I'm, I'm so sorry their names are not with me right now. With the creators of the, uh, the, the original X-Men animated series from back in the 90s. Um, I, unfortunately I couldn't make it, but Sean and, and Kaylin, I think I may have said Sarah, sorry, Kaylin, Sean and Kaylin did a great job on that interview. So that's coming up next week. And until then guys, drip, drip, as the swag squad would say, drip, drip. <laughs>